So, um, AMD is the greatest archive anyone could ever ask for. You know, of all the books I've read, of all the other online tutorials I've seen, this was the missing key. Every video is like packed with this information that I would never be able to get anywhere else. So I would say this, this is the greatest resource for learning animation. For me, AMB Animation Library is hands down the best animation learning resource that I've seen. I've tried all the tutorials, I've gotten all the books, I've never been able to um, really grow until I found AMB. And it's incredible. I've only just begun it, but like I definitely am getting more from that than I did from my one and a half years of college. I've noticed definitely that my animation has improved a lot and it's more alive than ever. And what I also like about his animation training is that you also gain real confidence. Real Animator Training Library is unequivocally the best resource uh, for animation, 2D animation, traditional hand-drawn animation that I've seen. So I wholeheartedly recommend the AMB Real Animator Training Library to anybody who wants actual knowledge and actual applicable concepts uh, to create their own animation and to move forward in the field of animation and to set your work above those uh, that are just kind of teaching themselves and not learning these true, tried and true classic concepts. AMB is motivated by his students' successes and improvements. He's a great teacher, a great animator with over 20 years experience in the industry so you can't really get much better than that. I strongly recommend him to anybody. I'm thinking on how to put in words what I feel about it. I love that. It approached me from my dream of becoming an animator. Every cent I paid in there was worth it. I like that the library is structured. I can go back and watch it anytime I want to. And um, he's just got so much knowledge. And uh, I just highly recommend it to anyone who's out there looking to learn traditional 2D animation. And so thank you, MB, so much. And uh, thank you so much for like all you've done for me. <laughs> so, are you going to join the library? Welcome, welcome once again to another edition of AMB Animation live stream. <coughs> right, so we got a fun live stream as this hula girl dancing is evolving into something. Um, I figured uh, let's carry it on a bit. Let's put a bit of layout. Let's put a bit of background, and then let's put a few more scenes in there uh, and just turn out another nice uh, little. AMB animation piece that I like to turn out on these live streams. Um, so uh, that's what we're going to do, and I'm going to show you the animation of the hula girl on twos. It's designed to be on ones, but uh, it's I've left it on twos at the moment because uh, you know I'm getting bored with it now, and you know I don't want to clean it up and in between it because those ones need to be done as. Uh, in between, so I may pay somebody to clean it up. So, um, so, uh, and just keep keep this thing moving and going on. All right. So, uh, let's first say a few hellos to people in the chat. And I got a message from somebody who was quite. I I really felt for the person. They were quite distraught about where they are in the art world and animation, and uh, it was a very heartfelt message. And I may. Uh, tackle that at some point in today's stream I may read it out and uh, and answer it because I think it's something that all of us uh, if we have either overcome it or are facing it or are going to encounter these depress depression depressive thoughts and things about relevance and ability and skill um, so I will tackle that question uh, later in the stream today right uh, before we go and begin with the uh, the stream the animation let's say hello to the people who have made themselves known 
in the chat we have got the lovely Hervonia Baker kicking things off followed by the super silver sun and the mega mage burger the righteous Ryanator <laughs> the uh, the decadent uh, Dylan the uh, King K.A. the the real red fox and the um, capable Cameron uh, followed by the rich richer <laughs> rich okay enough of this hello to all of you hello uh, so nice to see you on the streams I was trying my best to give you all uh, all um, all you know beef beef you guys up a bit um, I ate the mushrooms I don't get the I don't get the link um, with that mage um, bum, bum, bum. A white turtleneck. Well, since I'm doing a turtle today, I thought, well, let's get into character. All right, um, enough of that. Let us now uh, move on to the. Let's change our screen. Let's, let's put, put the my mic on. So hopefully, if there's any issues with the sound, uh, you guys just let me know. Right. So what have we, what have we got here? What's this mess? that you see before you this is me roughing out a layout based on this layout is based on pictures that uh, I got from my holiday uh, travels I, I am very turtly look look what I got here look what I got here right and for a reason I was cooking some mushrooms so now I've cooked them okay so um, this layout is really rough and scribbly and we're not going to draw that in today uh, but as I was thinking about what to do, I was thinking about a, a sea turtle behind her, right? Let me just show you the animation before I get ahead of myself. So I extended the animation um, because as on a loop, right, if she keeps turning her head like this, you know, she'll look like she's kind of having some kind of mental thing if she's keeping on doing that with her head after every hula cycle. So I kept the body and and reanimated the head on either side to make it more subtle and you could just have that right going for a few times if you wanted to but already like if the cycle repeats itself like I think three times it becomes 10 seconds and it was never intended to be a 10 second piece to be honest I may cut the animation just after one um, one turn of it but I, I prolonged it anyway so the head kind of has a bit of you know sensibility to it let me um show you the uh, line test of it let me just open that up so we have got amb hula cycle amb lady hula cycle and the hula hula hoop so this is it on twos right so you can see the head turns and then the head is oh no excuse me that's that's see that's what it's like with just a constant head action right no like it's a little bit too much right so um we have got hula cycle too right so now you can see what it looks like um as we now have a kind of more like subtle head action to bring us into the next cut right or we could like have that head turn as a cut but then it doesn't matter because the cut is going to be different so uh, now you can see I had to change and tweak the follow through on some of the um, uh, these things hanging off her uh, hula skirt because as I added some extra frames um, for the timing um, the follow through was a little slow so now it's all on track so that is the um, hula cycle and um, it, it's, it's not really gonna play more than like you know it's probably gonna go this way this way and then this way and then and then we'll cut on the turn here like this or I may even cut it sooner problem is when you turn out these things for live streaming you 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 make them instructional so the cycle didn't even have to be prolonged it might not even need to be a cycle the whole thing takes about two to two and a half to three seconds just to play once before we loop it right that could be enough 
if we're going to do storytelling. So I basically got a lot of wonderful uh, snaps of my trip to the island of Rarotonga, which is one of the Cook Islands, which is so close in New Zealand. Um, and uh, I basically based this background that I sketched on um, on my photo. I then looked at some of the palm trees and things. Do I have it here? I actually, while I was in Rarotonga, I made a few. Let me just bring the camera big. So this is this is important actually because I'm involving my I'm involving my turning turning, turning, turning my, my hol holiday into research. So while I was there, I made some sketches at the beach of like palm trees and studying shadows and. Um, this one's a little bit like so I made some sketches on the beach while my wife and daughter were snorkeling and swimming and all that stuff This was a quick sketch of some guys who were playing the band uh, playing the instruments um, And there were various dogs roaming on the island. So I made some sketches from them um, and then started thinking more um, Storytelling so this was happened so fast that like you know the dogs go roaming around the island they're 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 just free to roam around the island and i just scribbled it quickly and then had to just make it up from memory um i didn't really see a sea turtle my wife and daughter snorkeled with about five sea turtles i can't swim so i missed out on that so they brought some of the photos back and i made a drawing of that and these were just drawings of my daughter that I thought I would do in the house. So, um, so that was it. Yeah. And then there was a wedding going on um, at the island, and then I was d making character designs of the people who were in the wedding. So, keeping myself um, busy. Uh, of busy. Um, but then you can see where this then becomes applic applicable because while it's fresh in my mind all those palm trees on the beach and and what i would what i would understand about it is what i really found really um she might kill me for showing you this so i'll show you it <laughs> at a distance um is so here I've got a picture of my, this does it, this, this kind of explains it better. So this is my daughter, but the palm tree effect, oopsie, the palm tree that frames the, frames the photo, right? The palm tree that frames, frames uh, the photo, right? That's so, like as a filmmaker, that is just gold right so as i was um let's just go back to the screen so as i was making i don't need to show i don't need to draw it now because i showed you so i'm thinking about framing like that but i'm not this today's stream isn't really talking about framing and and layout and all that but i'm just giving you we're going to be designing um this guy here uh we're gonna be designing this guy here let's just get a big thick black for now right so i thought well you know i don't want to put other dancers in there because i don't want to make this work more of a workload it's just a fun little scene so i thought well a cute turtle in the back might be interesting but then i thought you know Comic, comic wise storyboarding wise if he's behind her what's he gonna see and whatever so then I started I got I'm jumping the gun a bit I'm jumping the gun I gotta go back to this scene so more inspiration um, um, I've got this guy here right and when I went to the local markets I'm developing a project at the moment that's got a lot of reptilian kind of creatures in there and I saw this and I thought that would make such a cool spaceship right right that would make such a cool kind of spaceship like this kind of tribal turtle kind of thing and then there was this uh, 
more like crocodile crocodile thing this could like be like sand dunes along the the desert turning into so thinking environment i just saw that and i thought it was cool but then this this thing doubled up because now as i'm designing a sea turtle quickly on stream i had this one here which is more of a it's kind of like caricatured but it's kind of like real as well so i thought well i could use that as the basis of my sea turtle but what we're going to do is we're going to look a little bit at turtle anatomy because even though this is a quick fun little thing i'm going to show you how i would design a quick character just a background kind of fun thing um on the spot and just do always go to a little bit of anatomy so that's what we're going to be doing um so we're going to be doing that um, and we're going to be looking at some anatomy, but I can see that we're getting loads of people coming into the chat. So before I switch screens and we start working and talking about this, I'll just quickly see what people are saying here. Um, Alpha Proto, Michael Kilner Davis, good to see you. People talking about the new Miyazaki film. Yes, I want to see that. Um. <laughs> I'm talking about the sea turtle that I'm going to use for a reference. Okay, let's change things up. Let's go back. Right, so what was I saying? So, storyboarding on the fly, which I don't recommend, you know. You should really storyboard but like as i said i've been ahead of story i've been in the game i've been like for so many years so i can just make make it at the top of my head it won't be the best but it's quick and it'll my not the best is better than most people so i'll live with that right um but it's not my best and that's the important thing right so um so the thing is um I thought, well, this turtle in the back, he could be like a grumpy old soul. So I sketched this sketch and I was just playing with these ideas from the top of my head, looking at turtles on the internet and looking at mainly this thing. And I really like the shape of his head and I'll talk about that in a minute. So I was just roughing, like these are the first few little ideas that I had. And then I thought what would be good is, is like, these drawings are a bit vague. so. After the hula dancing, we cut, we cut to a close-up of the guy's head, right? Um, one easy storyboarding trick for beginners, right, which is what they do in preschool, and do, is you have your layout here, right? You should really have the set, which we discuss, and you can work out your cameras from an aerial point of view. But if you, you know, if you're just starting out, you can just think, okay, this can be a mid shot that will cut into that, right? I can cut to her feet. I can pan up to her head next, right? It's all very flat, but this is for tr complete beginners who want to understand a little bit of storyboarding. I can cut into hair, which is what I am doing, right? I can, I can cut into hair. I can pull out of hair, right? Um... And they all relate to this, what you could call, it's not, but you could call it the master shot, right? In this, if you're going to deal with it in that kind of mentality, right? So very quickly, what I did is, is I thought, oh, okay, so he's going to be here, he's going to be sleeping and his eye is going to open and he's going to look up. Now, from his point of view, what's he going to see? This is a bit cheeky, right? And it's fun. It's funny. He's going to see like her hips swaying and doing the hula, you know, her butt going round and round. So we're going to cut back to him like this. And like a dirty old man, he's going to smile. To, he's going to smile to himself. Right. And then we're going to cut back to other hula things where um, where I was learning from the youtube videos all the meaning of like this is rain so i could cut to her hands doing that and this is the moon so there's so much potential to just storyboard on the fly to me to go and um to go and uh make this thing really good fun and lots of fun so that's what we're gonna be doing 
um, I'm going to be now I've kind of explained that I'm going to be designing the turtle character so first thing that I'm going to do is um, dun, dun, dun. this is I'm going to look at turtle because what I don't really understand turtle limb anatomy now I had a brief look yesterday but I said I'm gonna save this for the stream today right now as I look at it it's amazing because I see this diagram here and to me is his flippers are like this but it seems like they walk right let me just see if you can see what I'm seeing it seems like they walk on their belly like this right looking at the anatomy they're, they're they've got a humerus and they've got a radius and an ulna but they don't really have it turned this way right they've got it turned that way and I'll show you it's it's weird to get your head round um, but uh, definitely that's what that's what that's why I'm doing this on stream so they have the humerus bone hair and they have the radius and the ulna which I'm just going to make one shape because I'm not really going to they've also got a scapula but it's not in this drawing so the human scapula would be like this right and the humeral head would come here like this right that's a really bad humerus right and the radius and the ulna the ulna on this side the radius is on this side would be hair like this but this guy he's got a little humerus and his radius and ulna and hair and he's got all the carpals and metacarpals right by the looks of it that we have maybe not but it looks very similar and he's actually got right he's actually got now I don't need to go to this depth because it's just a quick thing but I but it's always good to learn right so he's got a hand right so his flipper is a fully he's got full just like birds wings right just like a bird's wing it's like because a bird's wing has got it's different a bird's wing is more like a human it, it goes this way and not underneath because he's lying on his belly right so he's just like this and the they've got these fingers which come out here and then you've got the tertiary feathers the secondary feathers and the primary feathers that go in there so that's a bird's wing but so his flipper is like this right and he's and 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 it just you wouldn't know in all this negative space here that that's where his elbow is right I would have thought that this was his hand and his elbow was hair and his wrist was hair like a bird's wing right but no the in all the negative space here that's where his elbow is at the, the peak of that like that and then he's got all these other things there so that's the and then funnily enough what they've got on top is is they've got all the muscles and everything coming over here and this little kind of sheath so he can actually extend his fingers the way we can but it's crazy because when you watch them move you don't see any finger movement it's so like i love anatomy i love human anatomy i love i love this is so much this is why like hopefully i can show you that knowledge really is power um, when when you when you really try and when you when you look at things with with an attempt to really learn and understand how something moves now what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna look at his hind legs right so his hind legs he's got a pelvis right now I'm just gonna I'm not gonna focus much on his pelvic sh shape or try to figure out what that looks like at another angle because it's all going to be concealed by his shell and I'm not really doing a central character of a turtle but he's got his femur bone right and just like us he's got the tibia and the fibula right like this right and then he's got 
he's got all the bones right that we have so his he's got feet like us but again it's gonna be like this kind of thing right with the flippers coming around it so it's very important to to get your head round that you really need to get your head round that because if you just look at the let me just get my stream back so you can see what I'm looking at if you just look at this the model or the what's going on he's doing the flow we can't stop him someone oh go and see the drawings damn it damn it <laughs> dear oh dear okay, okay. I've got I'm to think, think about, about how this stream is going to work. work. I just, just leave it up. up. We, we just, just leave it up. up. Those, Those who want to see it, want to see it. See it. Let's, Let's start, start again. again. So, so all, all of that, all of that is kind of going to waste. A and B, your camera is not on the screen. Okay. Never mind. Okay, so. Let's go back. Let's go back. I can edit this. We'll lose the chat in the edit, but so be it. So... What, what I was, I was saying, saying is, is they've, they've got, got this humeral head, head here, here right? right? They've, they've got, got the radius and the ulna here, hair, right? right? And, and then, then they've, they've got, got the hands with all the finger, finger bones, bones right? right? I'm, I'm just going to do them as long kind of things like this, this right? And, and then, then they've got the separate phalanges there and, and then, then hair is where see, see what, what I was, was saying earlier with, with, which, which wasn't on there is like a bird's wing comes, comes like this right, right? So, so you've, you've got, got the elbow here you got, got the radius and all the hair you got the thumb up here and then you've got the fingers the primary feathers right so this section would be the primary feathers this would be the secondary feathers and these would be the tertiary feathers right so the bird's wing follows the, 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 the kind of hand section here. So, so I would have thought this would be the hand section on the turtle, turtle but, but no, this is where the elbow beak is, is and all this negative, negative space here is, is where the, um, is, is where the, you know, know the, wrist the wrist is. So it's really, really, really important, important to research this stuff, stuff whether you're gonna take it into detail or not. Similarly, the legs, which, which I, was I was talking, talking about, about is, is he's, he's got, got um, he's, he's got, got this pelvis hair, right? right? Like, like this, this which is this, this kind of shape, shape and, and I'm not going to spend too much, too much time on it. And he's got, got knees, right? right? But, but he, he doesn't, doesn't seem to have, have a patella, patella right? right? So, but he's got the tibula and the fibula. And again, he's like got digits, right? But it's all covered up. With, with with fins, fins. Like, like that, that. Right? right so, so you wouldn't know, know. That's, that's what, what I, was I was trying, trying to say, say. You, you wouldn't necessarily know uh, double, double mic, mic. Okay. okay thank, thank you. you you wouldn't necessarily know looking at this or looking at the um uh images on Google how to go about designing the character if you just look at cartoon shapes or pictures so it's really important to um, to understand that you could also look at the skull but thankfully I've got kind of like a good understanding of, of skulls anyway because all skulls will have a maxilla they will have a mandible right so i could make up a turtle skull that won't necessarily be um like a real turtle skull without reference but for a cartoon quick thing like this you can it's easy you know we don't have to go into that kind of hardcore depth it's mo mainly for the parts that you personally don't understand 
like I personally don't understand the whole flipper thing um, so I wanted to understand it right so now let's start playing with this character um, let's get a fat thing so what I've got at the moment when I look at this thing here what I really like about this thing is the shape which is a little bit different to my I'm gonna just gonna go have a reference sea turtle sea turtle face right so I'm gonna have a reference of sea turtle faces around me but I'm gonna do a quick kind of like head turn thing about it and but what I really like and what I started going with from here is is this kind of shape like the profile really lends itself right so this kind of shape and then the neck sits on it i really like this this gives them like if you change it like this it changes its personality there's a hawk's bill turtle there's other kind of turtles but this gives them like kind of like a it's kind of like a an old guy right a, a cranky old guy right or a miserable kind of a miserable old man right I'm just making this up off the top of my head but this kind of nose thing lends itself for me to that whereas if he's more like that he's more becomes more villainous or more cunning or more um, you know because he's more pointy and hard hard edged so immediately so I like that shape right it's got a lot of appeal and character to it so I've immediately got that shape now when I look right I can do turtle turtle face anatomy turtle face anatomy right it's important because what I can do is, is through some of these diagrams like they talk about the prefrontal scales and the nares and all that they break it down for you so I can say that like okay instead of curling it like this I want it to be a bit like hard edged right like that because then I can say that this is the point of where the nose is going to be right and then his mouth is going to come down here and he's going to have his mandible now what i've got here is is like the real thing that just seems to go straight right but i've given him a little bit of a like a, a chin right just to add some cartoon like negative space here with his frown his frown line right just to give some some character to it now I can give him a foremouth like a beak kind of thing but have it come in like this right and this is where his eye eye socket is going to be right in line with that so I have to think like I could have his eye bigger higher but then I'm gonna main mainly maybe put his brow there like that but it's this is too high I might want to like they actually don't have brows sticking up at the top of their head but I might want to give him that feel so I'm gonna bring that in right I do like this actually I do like coming off hair like that right so I like this sketch that I made here a lot right I really like that so I'm kind of showing you how I came about to that conclusion right so I'm I've, I'm coming down here like this and then so if I want to divide his head into thirds right and then two thirds I'm gonna come up and then I'm gonna come down right to where his neck is gonna be right now I'm gonna bring this thing in right probably halfway in this third like this right by the way you should not design like this at your stage if you're early on right you should play and then this kind of like proportions of the face is a what i'm the, the law of appeal right which is one of the laws of and the law of exaggeration right how to combine these two laws 
is we think about the proportional ratio of the face, right? So then this third, I will, I will make this shape, which counters this shape, which I could either bring up, but I might bring down like that, right? So I'm thinking about the proportional values of his face at the moment, but you should not it's like when you it's like what I'm showing you here is like really advanced because I'm just I naturally draw like this so I'm showing you what my inner eye of understanding sees when I design but it's like people who try to design characters and they try to design characters like this right they start with the sphere and then they start no you should just play with shapes right play with shapes first play with the kind of thing that's in your head and then and then put all that construction in afterwards and make it work afterwards right we want our character to we want to have appeal we don't want to just be generic right we don't want to just be creating generic superheroes that all have that same kind of like proportion you know with the t head and you know and then and then a cloak and then we don't just want to say and now i'll just change the color of his underwear or now i'll give him a bigger nose or now i'll give him like eyes that go this way right that's just uh, that's just crap right so you need to let your imagination flow so while i'm while i'm disclosing this information to you um uh I have many people from different levels watching my stream, right? So it's tricky for me to, I don't want to keep it everything just so basic all the time. Um, so now I'm going to go halfway in there and I'm going to sit his eye, sit his eye in this section, right? I'm going to sit his eye in this section and his nose is going to come down where I said it would, right? along here and he's got a nostril now this thing i've got here has got a nice little diamond shape on the nostrils that could be interesting but i might want to keep it simple it gives him a pig like quality so i'll keep it simple then here he'll have he can have his his uh brow shape and his eye eyelid can go in there like that all right so we have something like this right and then of course the mouth right the mouth will be here right so from then on i will have i can think about giving him a little bit of a a kind of like like figure eight here to have his jowl and cheek of course he wouldn't have a real turtle wouldn't have jowls but I really like that. I really, really like that, right? And then I can figure out his patterns a little bit later on. So what I was doing is, is as I did this drawing here, right? I then started playing around and then I came up with this and found that I like this. Then I tried to do a front view, which wasn't very successful, right? And then I did a few character drawings and whatever and said, no, I can't really understand this head properly yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a turnaround of the head um, to understand it a little bit more, uh, to understand it properly. So that's what the next phase of this design section is that we're going to do. Then we're going to move on to the body, right? So let me paste this in here. Let me put this here for reference. And this drawing is the one I really, really like. So I'm going to copy this one here. And I'm going to put that for reference as well. So I'm going to try and do a turnaround of this guy's head, right? So let's just see how the stream health is now no issues while we're doing this um, the double mic okay <laughs> we're not on double mic now are we um, no we're not but we'll do it since you're asking for it 
tiger, tiger, uppercut, tiger, upper, yoga, yoga, fire, yoga, flame, yoga, flame, fire, 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 fire flame, yoga, fire, yoga, yoga, flame, tiger, uppercut, and then, I could keep going. One more, Blanca. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get let's get down to business and animate the turtle. I didn't ask for Street Fighter sound effects. That doesn't rhyme. All right. Anyway, um, so we're gonna have. I'm not gonna do all this measuring, right? I'm just gonna go into turnaround mode, animation mode, right? So all that measuring was a theory, but now I just wanna take this design that I like and figure out how he's gonna turn how his three quarters and all aspects of him is gonna be right I is a bit big oh thank you again my brother um i haven't even asked this time yet there he is uh with his donation thank you so much sir it is very much appreciated um there is a link in the description for those of you that want to thank me for the work that i'm doing um to donate to me um and i really appreciate um, the gentleman who is uh, supporting me every time I come on a stream um, there it is so much appreciated um, right now this head has got its problems I'm not I, I, but I don't want to uh, get too caught up with it. it it doesn't have the appeal of this but it's enough for me to kind of try to figure out a front view of it right so i'm going to let me just add a frame here so i'm going to now let's go in here so we're going to have a square here like this and his nose is going to be in the middle Right, so now I've got to think about the shape of the sky. Right, so I'm going to have something like this. It almost looks like a sad face. Let's make it a sad AMB with spiky hair. <laughs> right, so we have this. Um, and now we've got the brow turning here right. let me look at this so we've got the eyes will be more to the side kind of ellipses but i want it to be cartoon i don't want it to be too real right you can see where the challenge of getting a good front view is right now it's these eyes that are causing the the eyes are inset i may bring the eyes closer like this you see i'm not trying to really be careful with my lines or anything because i'm in problem solving mode right now that's what I'm in right so that looks good that looks good yeah we have something there so what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna tidy these up a little bit I'm gonna bring my friend here 
because I really like that energy of that drawing. I'm going to bring my brush size down. I'm going to now look to incorporate more of this, right? So I'll bring that down like that. Let's put that there. Have that coming in there. Now the eye, what I like about the eye is, is it's more this way. It's more this way. So let's make that eye shape like that. And let's have the brow come back. And then underneath we can have the creases and folds. And this this gives them that kind of old droopy feel so the turtle would not have jowls from a realistic point of view and I can put folds in his neck here like this and the, the neck is a whole other thing right so I'm not going to get too caught up in that let's have his nostril like that And his eye like that. Okay. So I'm going to have something. Yeah, that looks good. I'm liking that. So let's round him a little bit. Of course, the AMB lady, I've been designing and drawing for many, many years. So... I want the character in the background to, while it's a rushed character, I want it to be of the same, I want it to be of level. I don't want it to just look too weak next to the A and B lady. Right, so then this comes like this. That's, that's good. Now I'll figure out the markings. Um, from my references at some point. Okay, there we are. Um, now for the front view. Right, so again, I don't really care about this lining up as a piece of animation that lines up. It's mainly for me to do really learn the shapes and understand the character from various angles so I'm not trying to make a so if you do this at home particularly people in the training library who have learned the advanced character turnaround right this is a completely different mentality that I'm, I mean, it's the same skills, right? It's not completely like, oh, it's so different, but we're not caring about getting the animation to line up and match, right? It's just, just vaguely, right? We're more interested in, in solving design, shape, drawing issues that will help us get better at, at the, get a better design, right? That's, that's what this is all about right so now one thing i've noticed on some of these turtles is, is they come up here so i've gone down on that and i'm not sure that i want to maybe i can have it coming up there right i'm not sure that i want it to be up like this right it gives them this cat-like quality, which I don't want, but I might give him a little bit of a beak bill like that. So, and then I'll keep that thing going on in the front view by 
graphically turning it out like that we'll give him his little bit of a chin so one thing in human anatomy is is you got the you got the nasal bone here but then you got this thing here which is the maxilla right which has your molars and premolars and then then the nasal thing is here right like this now the jaw of the mandible will always kind of be like this which is why the comic book artists like to draw that t right for the but but then but then it comes under and and you know curves like this right so when i design characters i like to think of the the upper and lower jaw is a block like that but then you can always tilt this to the side and open it and you know if you've done the anatomy archive right so that thing is where the flexibility occurs not in this section here right so that's one of the things you want to bear in mind when you're doing these kind of designs right so now we will have the nostrils which will come on either side it still looks like the the sad ghostly amb right there right. so there we have i could like then create a, sh a design shape for the nostril like maybe i might have them square at the top like keyholes i don't know right, like that but so let's just do that right for now so i'm thinking about nice interesting shapes right so this is the center line i've got to make sure my face is balanced right so the eye then the eye I want to here I am trying to line it up a little bit so I want to think of the eye as the shape like this bum 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 then we we're gonna have to have it more open there i'm not so interested I've, i haven't lined up that eye but i just want to get a nice character out of this so i'm not gonna try to line up that eye i want the face to look good now we got the brows right what i'm gonna do for now is turn off the underdrawing because it's distracting me heavily right so this should come up this should come up but we need to keep that open right. this this one like this now the further apart the eyes are the more realistic the character will be now i don't want that to be too real so I'm trying to bring the eyes in, right? In this AI world where everything is even more uncanny valley than ever now, right? I'm the complete opposite. I want cartoon I want to have the sensibilities of realism, just like the Disney Milk Carl designs, but I want it to be cartoon, exaggerated, caricatured. And it to feel like oh that's real but it's completely the opposite like no turtle has jowls right i'm gonna have this now i'm gonna maybe put the whole thing there like that and bring that in i'm really trying to get something appealing out of this front view there's a challenge to to get it because we can't do the close together eye thing right 
and I want it as I said to feel real but also be cartoon good cartoon not um, not lame or easy kind of thing like I don't know why I'm getting Don Bluth land before time in my head as I'm drawing this but that's all good to me I, I love it's reminding me of the character Spike at the moment but um, that's all good for me Don Bluth has been a huge influence in my life in my formulative years right um, that's that, that that's all right I can live with that now let me do a um, let me do a I'm not going to do a rear view because I'm not so interested at the moment I'm going to do a three-quarter view so let's do that let's bring this here so the jaw would be here now again here we've got the three-quarter view here now I'm not going to try and line this mouth up again because I don't care about it animating I want I keep repeating myself because it's as an animator and doing things this way you do start to want to line things up and we're not going for animation we're going for appeal right design appeal so I'm telling that to remind myself and I'm telling that to remind you guys of what it is we're doing here right so I don't want you to think that this is the golden trick to to good character design good character design is appealing shapes right this is just me I've made a really nice drawing that I like which is here this head here and this is me trying to figure it out right because I'm not able to figure it out like this right so I'm figuring it out like this that's what it is this drawing I can tell without inversing is heavily imbalanced right train your eyes to understand that but I'm not here as I said to make these drawings are, are gonna end up probably completely irrelevant they won't be irrelevant because I'll have used the knowledge attained from them but they will not these are just formulative drawings they're like fundamentals of like you know if I was a dancer I would need to stretch right he's like the stretching right it's gonna be completely you know it's just building my brain cells to say okay that's how it is right now I'm gonna keep that eye width hair like this now again you see I'm wanting to in between to the front view but I'm changing that because I'm going more for the nicer shape that I want if I get a good three quarters out of it right that's what it's that's what it's about getting the good three quarter view all right that'll do let me tidy that up now I will tidy that up with very little heed to the front view because the side view when it comes to this character is the appealing view the three quarter should look pretty much like the side view really we've got to try and get the dimension into this eye we don't want it to be just flat so here I am kind of animating a little bit because I really like the side view right so I'm now I'm kind of not not caring about the 
whether it animates and I'm thinking more about the um, what was that on the front view that was not how it went was it it went down and up like that that'll do right. Right, maybe put a little bit of a shape there now this thing is in line with this right so I still want that to be in line with that I'm gonna jut his chin more because I like the chin being jutted more so that will not animate definitely right so we're gonna have the center of his head this way next will be to work out the markings right and to to make the markings of the head simple but animatable right because we don't want it to be th that's that's where you need to come up with a winning formula so they don't float around and warp on his head kind of like the stripes of a tiger we have to really simplify it so that'll be the next stage now I will, I'm gonna kind of keep this here now I might introduce a little bit of the underside of his 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 jaw there right because it rests down so that gives him some texture so it's not a floating head that's good right like that hopefully you're enjoying watching this guy become more fleshed out <laughs> wonder which turtle it is right right so I'm going to really make a understanding of the outline shape of the sky that's not right what I'll do is, is I'll put an extra line in here like this to indicate his head something to help that three-quarter view let's not lose any mass here's where the animation can help right in getting um, getting the drawing to you know the ratio the proportions to sit right I want a good three quarters. Three quarters is a very important view. Right. All right, that'll do. That'll do. Right. So, three quarter front and side we have. Now, let us look at. Um, the design now I've got this thing here which is simplified but I'm also going to look that they're saying they've got these prefrontal scales right so I'm going to start with the front view and animate backwards for this right so he's got two scales I'm going to deal with pure just harsh shapes at the moment he's got two scales that are going to be there right and they're quite close to the nose right so let's bring them now here I've got them continuously going out right At the top of his head so they're long which it, they should I don't know if I want them that long so you see problems are arising right Maybe I'll bring them in at the side like that. No, no, no. Let's keep them long out looking at my model. 
let's keep them out like that I might bring them down like this we bring them down so we'll bring them down that'll that'll give them this thing is too high again I'm not this is what my problem I'm trying to animate it when it doesn't animate right so these will be like this these I can tidy them up later but that's that's that and on the side view it'll come down there so like that bum, bum. all right now what else he's got the side post orbital scales right this is orbital right orbicularis oculi, oculi the orbit of the skull so it's called orbital so around here now let's look at my model they've got two big chunks that's good so around here i might make one here and just put two the this guy has got loads right so but i might just put a shape like this right so we'll make it like a pair of pants with a vifront <laughs> in the middle right it sounds like a silly thing to talk about it like that but that is a good way of designing simplified so i'm going to create this line here like this I'm going to divide it in half and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do that right so we're just going to create this line here and I might just put a little bit of a dink along where the wrinkle of the eye is but at the moment I'm dealing with them as just graphic shapes I'm not I'm not uh, so I'm going to apply that same consistency trick right now this is a piece of information that I'm disclosing that I think is is so good right especially to beginners that I am gonna say if you appreciate what I'm doing uh, there's a link in my description you can donate to me on that link to say thank you or you can visit my website get some merch or if you're really serious you can think about joining the real animator training library so here you can see where I'm now starting to put um, that pattern on the side of the face and we're getting consistency out of it here we will just see one on either side like that right bum, bum. right now he's got lots of scales so they've got they've got three running around along here like this now i don't want to make this too complicated so i have to really think about i might just make a shape at the bottom of his thing and i might put one here and one here and then just one in the middle like that and if you want to you can put one down there as well but then is that is that making it too complicated so at the moment I'm going to think of it as a shape like this, right? Which echoes that shape, right? And then there we wouldn't really, we just maybe see just that bit of it like that, right? So now here I'm going to break, break off at the sides here, maybe in line with this, right? we can come here like this this and then probably hang this one lower right here like this and then put a little spot on top of the line right so that's how I'm thinking about how to simplify it right so then here I've got like one here so when you animate you always keep these things consistent because you're dealing with the formula right so we've got one here one here one here and one here like that 
and then that's just gonna be there like that now I'm gonna kind of tidy up I, I, that's enough right I don't I don't want to give him any more right he may have one just on the one just on the back of his neck there like that right and then maybe just a smaller one right the more work you do the more you do the more the more work you're giving yourself as an animator and you know these kind of things are not you know if I said to life fantasy do you want to clean this up I think I'll be getting one of these in my face <laughs> right but it's yeah it's not you know it's not the best not the most exciting thing um, but hopefully I've given you the the easy solution right now I'm gonna kind of like consolidate these shapes with this right so I'm gonna use a, a light red right so these shapes are gonna kind of be rounded kind of hexagons or things like that right and they don't have to always be the same shape right just in the scene that you're animating they have to feel that they're to the kind of designery like one two three four five six kind of hexagon kind of hexagonal kind of rounded hexagonal shape right yes so we have this one here like that I hope really hope I feel that I'm really sharing some really valuable insights into um, model consistency and professional um, design here um, so yeah so if you are as I said if you want to thank me there is the easiest thing you can do if you haven't already done so is is like subscribe and share this video uh, so it helps this channel get discovered by people like you who love hand-drawn animation and are really the you know the torch bearers for it as we continue advancing as a technologically we're the torch bearers for the artists right you know in the technological race the art is being left behind there's an art to technology but the art of the human expression is being lost right so you guys by liking and sharing my work you are helping it be found by people like you who are going to unite with us in the um, in the salvation of the art form right so that's that's what it's all about so let's just put this here again this doesn't a hundred percent animate because the face and head doesn't animate a hundred percent with the front view but we are looking to design a character here and to solve problems bum, bum, bum. we're still talking about ninja turtles i kind of don't like the fact that ninja turtles have a monopoly on turtle characters right i don't even like the ninja turtles particularly much to be very honest with you um uh there were 80s cartoons for me that were just absolute class and then there were the kind of like more trashy ones i'm sorry to say i didn't really rate the ninja turtles particularly um i like things like thundercats 
I like the original Masters of the Universe. Um, but, you know, you had other shows like Jason the Wheeled Warriors. My God, what a show. Ulysses 31 or something. These shows were the real Ghostbusters. I mean, Ghostbusters had the potential of being trashy like um, like the Turtles. But the stories, some of the stories had real depth. And, you know, mature sensibilities to them. Right, so that is kind of like what we've got for the head so what i'm going to do here on this page is, is let me i'm going to have to make this all one color let's make a let's make a, a, a kind of mini model sheet of um of this character as we're building it right so let's let's have a head section this is always how i used to present my work to my clients after a day of character design whenever i was asked to it's funny i was talking about um i've got i've got videos of me explaining um in live stream which was then sent to the art director when i was head of story on a movie but because I was such a strong character designer they would ask me to um, do my versions of the characters and explain make explainer videos for the character designer that had come on board for the project because he wasn't quite getting what we were going for or what the director was going for so I was asked I've got some videos of that and you know I might do a one-off seminar where I charge a fee where if anybody wants to see those the storyboards I did and the videos of that project um, I'll talk you through it but then again I've got to set it up and make it all work so all right so that is the let's just um, let's black that in save that before anything weird happens to it I always tell when there's too many vector lines that thing started that looks good that's a nice little sheet that look at that um, now we got uh, Dylan Dylan draws online um, now let's go on to the character's body right Let's go on to the character's body. So now the turtle shell anatomy. Turtle shell anatomy. Let's talk turtle shell anatomy. Now I've got this here, which is pretty accurate. But um, sea turtle shell anatomy. So it's amazing because here they talk, they show that you know the shell is part of the vertebrae but i don't want to get into all of that right we don't really need to um what 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 is interesting though is we've got the head right i'm not going to draw too much of the skull right we've got the the head and the neck goes up round like this Right. and the pelvic girdle right I'm drawing an inverse right it's actually facing the other way I don't know why I did that but never mind it's a good challenge right. here you got the shoulder girdle which is a scapula right but actually my bad it should be here right I always have to make life hard for myself don't I I just draw it in the angle it was, right? So here the humerus is, the radius and the ulna, and the hands are all there like that. Okay, so this is this almost looks like a, they say turtle shell, but it's tortoise almost, because he's got his elbows out to the side and he's on, on the back of his wrists, right? 
and then you've got the you know the femur is blocked but you can see the tibia and the fibula right and then the little bones right now underneath they've got something called the plastron which I don't really know what that is good it's funny it's called the plastron because it almost feels like plastered on right so the shell is like this it's part of the this thing comes at the neck comes up on the vertebrae as all hair and the shell grows off the vertebrae like this but the big takeaway for me is is everything is like you know you could have it a little bit rounded but everything is flat to the floor and it's like coming down like this so it's almost like the shape of his head right so that's my takeaway right that's my big takeaway like and the the neck is like a humpback right so Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles would always, always, no matter how teenage they are, in my opinion, they would always be geriatric mutant ninja turtles because they would have to have humpback like that, right? <laughs> Never mind, right. Um, so let's look at the shell... Uh, let's look for a simple shell pattern explaining the shells this one looks pretty much like my model here so my model has got one two three four five one two three four five one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four right so the shell pattern we've got like this kind of like shape right which is more like like an eye but without that bit there right and what we have is is we have the hexagonal patterns we have got one right which comes here then we've got like a long hair we're going to have to split it two three four and i'm going to have to change my outline drawing because i want you see how I'm having to program my brain to just understand this information, right? So one, two, three, four, five, right? Then we're going to come along the sides and we're just going to fill it in by the looks of it. So then we're going to have one here, right? But then that's, is that going to have that, that, that's weird, right? I've made that wrong. I've done that wrong. Um, it's not so much of a hexagon. It comes there like that. One, two. So at these points, at the points, it comes off, right? So then this is going, I'm going to be more like a hexagon, right? I haven't drawn a proper hexagon. Right, so one, two, three, four, right? So you've got to really get those hexagon shapes, right? Which I haven't as I'm trying to make sense of all this, right? Now these things on the side don't necessarily line up, right? These things on the side, they just have as many as you like. That's what it looks like to me, right? It might be nice to line them up. Then you've got the fins coming out here and the the arms are bigger and the head is like that right which is pretty much what this is and he's got a belly pattern too so this is very very useful actually but why do i go to google and look at the anatomy when i got the model is because i want to really understand what i also want to understand now i've got to say sea turtle basking because i want to see um what the inside of the shell looks like from a three-quarter angle because none of these drawings kind of show that um, that'll do so i have it i had it kind of here right i had it here when i made a reference drawing right but i wasn't clear because i was making a reference drawing right now i really want to get my head round this guy so what I'm thinking is I'm thinking 
he's going to have a shape like this, right? So again, I'm going to have to do a kind of like a, a turnaround of this character, right? If I want to get this right. So, but first I've got to figure out what I want from the shell. So everything for me works better from the side view of of a turtle so I'm gonna look at the simple side view image and then I'm going to um, base my drawings of that base my turnaround of that now the more and more we're looking at the that'll have to do all right so let's have him the other way right so we've got this we've got something like this so it's essentially this shape it's essentially a triangle with a curved arch right and then we're gonna we're going to cut away along halfway yeah along halfway we're gonna cut a long way so you see how I'm thinking about that and then and then on this half we can cut the back like that but and then I'm good that's how I've got the shell right and this thing I like to divide into four maybe right so now I've got to remember about the neck right so his neck is a cartoon character we can have him up we can have it down but I'm just gonna keep him kind of like normal see I've got a I'm gonna look at my head as well and, and remember my head shape because I'm all working very very fast I've already forgotten what I did with the head right but because I've gone to this I can now really off stream if I really want to develop this character I can right right so that's the head right head is a feels a little bit big but I can change his proportions later on right so I remember that I got into the head like that yeah that levels it up and we have his um we have his mouth here like this and his eye going this way and then his jaw like this All right there we go All right so this 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 All right i would not i may curl that slightly right now he has a tail but we don't really see that tail we, he has feet and his arms are gonna be a lot bigger so let's have his elbows out and on the back of his wrist so his hands will be here like this right good job I did my anatomical research right really if he's lying on the floor then his arms need to be here but I don't you know I'm just working stuff out all right so that's the shape that's the shape now I'll figure out the shell pattern as I do the turnaround but I'm gonna cut this let's um let's make the uh let's not be precious about these let's delete these now right let's make the um the turnaround of the body i'm going to put that there for reference because i've got to do it again how are we doing for time One hour seventeen in Ed Dado is here. 
Blockbuster. I know what you're talking about, Zentron. With Bob Holness. People won't know about that. What's Ed Dodo saying? People can recognize me even with mask. What mask? Is that the thing you're doing? Or are you talking about mask crusaders in the something something? I don't know the words evil raiders. Tracker's going to lead the mission. Akal the warrior. Akal. We always make that noise for Akal. Akal. <laughs> a moustache would be appropriate here. Um, okay, the double mic. Selena Nina warning me about that. Uh, this stream. This stream has reminded me to mess around with expressions more yeah you don't want to do the old anime thing that's you know please um, play with expressions right. let me just play with expressions now you can even make a right let's do the AMB lady making a making a crazy expression right right Let's make a crazy expression out of something that we normally wouldn't want to play with expressions. Let's let's do something with her under eyelids. Alright. I'm just doing this. Let's grease the let's bring out all the things we would let's bring an inner nostril. Let's bring this up here, right? Play with expressions, they can look good, right? Let's really show those teeth, right? Let's bring the hair, let's bring her hands out, right? Suddenly the character you know, and then I can think about putting it on model. Afterwards, right? Worry about drawing what's in your head first and then put things on model afterwards, right? Get it out. It's only going to sit in your mind for a... <laughs> There's that cow with the, with the lyrics. For a, for a very short moment before it starts to fade, right? So get what's in your head on the page, right? So I'm going to start with this shape, right? I'm going to consolidate what I, what, I, what, I, what I was thinking about earlier, right? So it's going to start with this shape. Then along the halfway point, we're going to come down, right? And we've got... I'm going to divide that into four and I'm not going to I'm going to be a little bit more subtle about that right so that's going to be there now from here from this point here I might bring the head in right right like that right so this head comes in like this right I'll have to get his eye details back from looking at the previous thing, but that'll do for now, right? That'll do for now. Right. Then we've got the scapula, which is here, right? And his elbow and his wrist and hands will be here. We want that to be quite big. Right, so that will go probably to the halfway point I uh, will have. Right, now the knee will come under here and his fin will be here like that. So that's the basic shape. And then I'm going to think about refining it. But before I refine it, I'm going to do the front view.
So the front view is going to be like a box. That I'm going to divide in half. Now I need to look at my sea turtle from the front. So I'm going to divide these in. I'm going to bring a third of that, right? And I'm going to going to this is where the head's going to be. So this is from the halfway point. It's going to come down here like this. Let's divide this in half like that. Again, it. I don't want to completely advocate this. Um, what I'm doing here. So one thing I missed is it should be a triangle, not a square, right? And the triangle should be, yeah, let's start again. Let's start again. This is the perfect example. So I'm going to half that. Now I'm going to keep his width more or less. Right. From the front view. Right. Because it's super important. Now I'm going to half along these lines again right I'm gonna curl around there like that right so I'm not I'm 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 not trying to plan construction at the moment but I'm creating brain cells I'm building brain cells I'm building cells of recognition in my mind of um, of how to tackle this uh, turtle shell right so uh, here that impression was for mage burger only he I think will know who I was impersonating right so this along here will come along again the halfway point here like this All right so I'm really trying to understand the shape of this guy right so now his head is going to be there. We already, I'm not going to kill myself trying to figure out the front of his head. I kind of already remember what I had, right? Like that. So now I have to think about these flippers, right? So he's got his, comes his humerus comes forward, his elbow goes backwards and his flippers go out like this. I'm gonna think about that. How messy this can be. I'm really trying to solve these problems. Let's keep it low. So he's almost the same width so his flippers will be coming back on themselves this is going to be a difficult drawing but i'm glad that you're all witnessing me trying to solve it right but that's my initial understanding i'm going to look at this right what i like about this design is, is the flippers or come up and away right more exaggerated right so i might want to do something like that with that so let's try to make sense of this slowly now so you see when you have to design for like back in the day Disney TV shows were always really bad because they tried to take feature animation and make TV cartoons out of them um, but um, back in the day um, you had to kind of design extras for those shows right now I never worked on those shows but why am I talking about that is 
because you had to be able to design featuresque kind of quality characters very quickly, right? As a character designer um, that would sit in that style, you know? So these, um, this whole construction thing of, you know, the ratio of, you see me saying, well, it'll be half his head for this and that this is a good way to work very fast, right? Uh, to get appealing things. But as I said, you don't want to, particularly if you're a beginner, you don't really want to be thinking so much about that as if that's, that's the real answer. You, the real answer to everything is, is your imagination and how creative, um, creative you are, right? Not any of these kind of like technical, the technical things I'm showing you help. They help you get more professionalism and help you understand appeal. But they will not, I repeat, they will not, you know, they're not the starting point. Now, I want the flipper to be big, right? So I'm going to give him these big flippers like that. I'm going to look at my model for this because the model has really exaggerated the size of the front flipper. Right now I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to resist the temptation to do the shell pattern just yet because that would be procrastinating from the challenge that lies ahead of this front view, right? This is the real, um, difficult things. So I'm going to warm myself up to it by refreshing my memory of the um, what I did for the head. I'm a bit quiet at the moment because I just want to concentrate. Alright. Not quite to the model what we did, but closer. That'll do. Let me just very quickly take this and make sure that it is the right size. Again, I'm not so interested in it being animating or whatever, but I want I want my proportions to feel the same when I'm um, when I'm figuring this out. Now I'm going to look at this because this is going to help me. I'm going to have something like this. Right. Let's take a look at that. Now there's this thing up here, right? Which is super, super high. So I need to put that higher. That's the top of the shell there. The sides come along here like this where are we going to go down to where the shell hits the ground like that now the shell is going to be turning in on itself here so that'll give me a little bit of I'm kind of thinking a little bit about the pattern of the outer shell at the moment because otherwise I'm kind of going to just going to get lost. Um, we'll worry about that in a minute. That will kind of like go something like that. Yeah, that works like that. Okay. 
then we have the middle casing well the under casing which will be like this now for the arms right now I'm gonna do something crazy here just for my old sa own sake I'm gonna make him like a ninja turtle I'm going to I'm going to draw so his elbows are going backwards on themselves right and his hands are going to be like this now I'm going to get rid of all of this but just in order to get my head around this right gonna delete that because that's putting me off now right I'm gonna yellow those okay that gives me an idea of what his hands are doing now let's I don't want it to animate I just want to get a decent shape of the flipper Flipper, flipper, faster than lightning. Imagine Skeletor singing flipper. Mm -hmm, man, you have interrupted my daily viewing of flipper. This. Like that. And what I really like about this, but is they have turned him they've got him lying front ways but I'm gonna kind of just keep that as is there's oh yeah there's a power that comes from deep inside of you it's every day is something of the light you're searching for the light yeah you know there's a long long way ahead of you but when your wheels get you there He's singing Jason the Wheel Warriors. Things will turn out right. Right, anyway. Um, sea turtle limbs. I'm going to go to limbs again. I want to see what the limbs look like from the front. Oh, he's basking on the side. I guess you could do that you could see I'm putting anatomy in there but you could think of them like a circle like this with a structure here like this and then I will turn it up on itself so then this Could be that. Like that. You could think of it like that. Right. This kind of shape. I don't really need to like the legs is then gonna be like this so the foot is gonna be this that's a better way of looking at it we're solving it we're solving it that's for sure okay so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cut all this section out I'm gonna do that as we're getting to the bottom of this right problem solving problem solving I love doing these things live because you can really get to see how 
things don't always come so easy, right? Relatively, relatively. I mean, I'm still designing a pretty badass character here pretty quickly. But when you don't know the subject matter so well and then you try to simplify an an anatomical shapes problems can arise all right let's do away with that so now i'm gonna give him like wrinkles of like so his neck is here his neck really should be resting on the ground, but never mind. We'll, I'll imagine like what it'll be like to he'll have a sternocleidomastoid, right? With a, with so his sternocleidomastoid will be like that. Then he'll have the folds under his um, deltoids. Again, I don't know if he has deltoids, but if he's got shoulders, he probably has got deltoids, right? So that's how we solve the, you see how even human anatomy can solve these problems. Let's give him a sternocleidomastoid, right? Let's give him a little bit of a trapezius coming in here like that, right? So I can just suggest anatomy to help this now onto the shell onto the shell let's give him a little bit of a kind of like an inside I think I did that over here right this image here I'm going to look at because it um, it helps me um, why can't I get that Let's put that here. So that was my initial kind of scribble from looking at a reference. And what it'll help me do is it'll help me tackle this shell because I don't want to religiously stick to my construction of that shell. If it's not working, it's not working. I can pull and change it a little bit. Right, so. It's like a balance between the side view and the front view before I even think about the juicy three-quarter view, right? We're not interested so much in that view because that's just the go-between. It's the appealing view, but it's the go-between, right? So I'm going to have... something like this right that's the width of the shell we were making it too thick before right we want the shell to be this kind of width yeah, now I'm gonna go back here and I'm going to move him here. Well, not bad, not bad, actually. Let's just bring that down a little bit. So we don't want it to be at the peak of the triangle. We want to bring it down. And what I'll do is I'll jot that forward give it a nice little bit of a cartoon feel like that that kind of doesn't animate completely because his belly should be there right so if his belly is there then that feels good to me 
but I'm going to change it. But now it's head. That's the problem. When I've done it, I have put his belly here and his head higher there. So his head is actually lower in this image. So this is actually should be like this. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go back and I'm going to change this drawing. So this drawing I'm going to put here. Now I'm going to bring his belly down. All right. His belly is down. All right. Let's change the shell. Then I can deal with the head. I will save time by moving the head up. If you really wanted to consolidate the drawing, you should redraw the head. Right. But um, I don't want to spend unnecessary time on this stream as need be. Right? Again, it's not about trying to make it line up. It's about trying to understand the shell from the front view. Right? Because to be completely honest with you, the front view is the difficult view, right? As far as I'm concerned for this, for this character. And it's a view that, that is, is instrumental if you want to animate. You have to have a good front. That looks good. That looks good. Problem solved. Let's, um move that there now so we're getting something out of it All right good we're getting that shell let's go back to the sternocleidomastoid and the deltoid um, creases right so we've got the inner shell which is like that. Now we're going to think about the outer shell, right? So this is where we're going to put the pattern on there. I'm going to draw Jerry, <laughs> geriatric teenage mutant ninja turtles. Um, you should. Crime fighting time. I don't know why when you've said that you've made me think of the Mighty Mouse cartoon. Here he comes, that Mighty Mouse, just like a bolt from the blue, fighting evil, fighting crime. <laughs> He's always there in the nick of time. Now, let's, let's, let's try and make sense of this, right? So the shell is going to have outer piece as well so this is the first thing so I'm going to bring a nice back piece onto it like that so then this we would see that outer piece that actually wouldn't be there it would be more down here so we would see that outer piece along here like this and that's just the inner side of it so we would bring it along the sides like that right so that's the outer piece now now along the thing we're gonna have this middle section now I've got to think about dividing this right if I divide this into thirds right now I will have half here, but then I divide this into thirds. One, two, right? So one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, so that's how I'm going to solve this, right? So this is divided into thirds. So now we need five along here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Right, 
but then we're going to indicate that kind of hexagonal shape right. let's just double check that one two three four five let's look at it here so the hexagonal shape we will just see the first one there like that Got it. now this thing we have we're gonna have one we're gonna have an extra piece here one two three four gotta think about a nice shape here like this now that feels a bit big for me so I'm gonna increase this thing's shape like this who made the ellipse right I didn't what the, <laughs> didn't even press that right and then from here what's going on on this side you don't really see that you would see oh, this one would come along the side like this yeah two three four like that now i'm tempted to make little shapes here like this i don't know why let me see on my turtle shells yeah those shapes are not even i want to break the evenness right so that's what i want to do i'm going to make that hexagon a bit fatter I want to break that evenness right so then here we're gonna bring I think as each one of these things come out to the side I'm going to make these things here like that right I shouldn't have done the shell as just yet um, because I'm focusing on the I'm going to delete him for now now let's um, let's kind of round off the pattern like that let's just bring these in yeah that's good then we're going to add we'll just add things like this here I could add another line here but I'll take that out because it's making things far too complex so and then now if we want we can make the turtle shell have a bit of texture to it right we can break it up just to stop it from being so uniform His feet will also need to have patterns to it but for now I'm quite happy to just keep things as is there we go now we've got this one to think about so we'll have this going this way like that
then that's it really oops we forgot the side of the shell which comes down like that you can put lines there there right so we now have a front view let's put in some let's put in a bit of a chest indication there and the head now I will make the three-quarter view and this is quite rough but a lot rougher than the head but it's important because it's building me the brain cells to be able to understand you know whether it works 100% or not that doesn't matter I can understand um, how it's gonna be so let's kind of use a bit of that construction thing here let's let's think about that shell coming back on itself so we've got this shape like this right then we've got the front shape right the arms which are like these things we'll come along here we can have a introduction of the other arm here like this the head will be here the neck come up here like that so you see now I'm charged with information that enables me to visualize the turtle's body a lot easier right um, because I had I had no clue earlier on right I, I can look at images on Google but it, because I don't understand the the form of the turtle and the shell and I, I can't really make confident decisions without having going through this right now I now I've got a more of a confident approach to how to tackle that now I'm gonna go and draw in I no longer work in the industry because the industry doesn't inspire me I had 20 years of work in the animation industry I've been an animation supervisor I've directed uh, animation for shows like Lego The Legend of Team Chima I've been a head of story I've been a story artist for Lego Nexo Knights for 20th Century Fox movies like Fantastic Mr. Fox and Tales of Despero I've done a lot of series work I've done all these in fact let me tell you a little bit about me um, as you know we reach the middle the two hour mark of the stream and then we'll come back and finish this three-quarter view um so basically um if you go to ambanimation.com um which is my website you can watch my work here for that i've done for as amb animation not for the animation industry but if you go to about you have two abouts you've got about amb animation which uh explains to you again you've got the You've got um, oh, come on. a flash of all the AMB animation stuff. You've got all about, well, you know, Universal, 20th Century Fox, Columbia, Disney Junior, Lego, Cartoon Networks, PBS, MTV, BBC, ITV, Kellogg's, Ferries, Filmax. These are just a collection, right? This, you know, so that's a splash. But if you really want to know about me, you can go on Meet AMB. And this is old now. This is quite old. But, um, you have um, the animator years, you know, 
after I graduated from school, one of my second ever job was on uh, Adam Sandler's Eight Crazy Nights. Um, you know, I then went on. So basically it's all here. You got like people like uh, supervising animator at Universal Pictures giving me his view, lead animator at Disney giving me. If You can go on my LinkedIn. All testimonials are on my LinkedIn so you can verify all these people. Why you wouldn't believe me, that's on you. Right, so um, so you've got uh, these guys. Then you got my. Uh, then as the industry went to CG, I played around with CG for a bit. I didn't like it. I, I I actually at one point toyed with the idea of becoming a cage fighter and quitting animation because I couldn't stand CG. But then cage fighting is also so against what I feel martial arts is. So I was in a bit of a mental, not in a mentally nice place when. Uh, hand-drawn animation became less and less in the industry but then I found my way as a storyboard artist so you can read about what I did leadership supervision direction television animation again you've got like um people like in the UK there's a huge series called Horrid Henry I did multiple seasons of that you've got you know um Lego Lego Chima when I was the animation supervisor on that you got you got uh, uh, the testimonials and uh, references of all these people as well as the descriptive writing of all of the time 20 years I've spent in the animation industry um, then it talks about how I became tired of the animation industry how I felt my work my my skill of drawing my level of animation was declining rather than increasing because as technology became prevalent, the art form started to get lost. Uh, people were becoming more and more reliant. Even storyboard artists were becoming more and more reliant on importing in CG. Here you talk about the, my, my world as a martial arts instructor. So I then apply my martial arts instructing to the way I teach animation. So it's not for everyone. It's, um, you know, I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit rough. I'm a little bit harsh. Uh, with the way I teach animation so this whole page is about that but um, I became tired of the animation industry I felt that it was uh, it was ruining my career rather than improving it and uh, creative 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 wise I mean even the comics industry is every, every everywhere I, I predicted this like creatively we are industry wise it's an absolute nightmare nothing is nothing is inspiring for me from the industry anymore so I now create my own content I'm creating my own series I'm creating my own work alongside uh, the training library that I've built which has helped sustain me to take AMB animation to the heights where it's going to be continuing to go so um, I, I feel that we are the future of hand-drawn animation. The industry is the past. The industry is desperately trying to remain relevant by using AI and using technology to just mass produce stuff uh, to the point where um, it's going to be all about the consumer and not at all about the artist. Whereas the independent scene, people like you and I who uh, who enjoy art and who are no longer part of the industry and i'm so happy to say that about myself i never thought i would ever but i i i turn industry gigs away because the industry just is not where i want to be it's i don't consider it relevant to what i do i'm i'm forging ha uh, the future of hand-drawn animation i'm ex expressing it at its highest level and i'm helping other people uh to learn it and do the same we're taking the art form forward rather than regressing it to the past. So the industry for me is irrelevant, uh, which is why it, uh, I no longer uh, talk about it much with a sense of that it's something to be proud of. It was something to be proud of back when I worked on it. It gave me the skills, but uh, now it is something I would be uh, ashamed of, to be very honest with you. There's not a single project being made in the industry that I feel is worthy of my skills or worthy of me stopping what I'm doing now to be a part of. Um, so you can find out about my life in the animation industry there. Um, if you want to join uh, and become part of the future, become part of the new wave of hand-drawn animators uh, that animate for real 
in this world of artificial art and artificial animation. Um, you can learn from the real animator training library. Um, what you're watching at the moment is almost like a seminar. It's almost beyond what I call edutainment. Um, so I'm currently designing a character. We've currently been, you've been watching me over the past few live streams animate these, uh, this hula girl dancing. And now I'm putting it in context. I'm showing you how I would then create a layout, create a, create a mini kind of storyboard based around that. Um, so you're kind of like getting, getting that, uh, free on these live streams, but in a very kind of, uh, um, I don't know why that happened in a very quick way. Uh, but what that's why am I talking about that? If you click join now, you get the option to have access. Here's to someone who joined my you training. You get to see people, people's work as well. You get two options. You get edutainment, which is like what we're doing here today, which is like quick tips and inspiring. You can watch a great master at work and pick up things. Or you can have the training archives, which are step-by-step, -step, follow along animation uh, tutorials that are going to uh, really give you the goods that you need to have. Let's just take a brief look at the inter intermediate archive uh, while I take a bit of a bathroom break and then we'll come back and do the next, um, the finish off that turtle. Character animation is the focus of the Intermediate Archive, and it's where you will learn exactly how to express character into movements via the 12 laws of animation. You will begin with the law of solid drawing, where you will understand how to construct and keep form of a simple sack character that you will be using for many of the exercises in this archive. Next is a three-part lecture series on the law of squash and stretch. This goes far beyond the simple deformations that you learned in the basics archive, and you will learn exactly how to draw and design shapes that squash and stretch with appeal and animate in a convincing and effective manner. You will then move on to a two-part lecture series on the law of anticipation. Here, you will build upon all the previous laws that you have learned so far by introducing character acting via anticipation, as well as the laws of exaggeration and appeal. Afterwards, you will master the law, follow through an overlap in an intensive four-part lecture series where you will animate the sack waving a flag in an elaborate manner. Although the lecture is primarily based on follow through an overlap, it is carried out using the law of pose to pose and straight ahead and designed specifically to make you consolidate the laws of arcing, diming, squash and stretch, as well as slowing in and slowing out. Next, you will animate a sack throwing a ball via the law of primary and secondary action. The three-part lecture series will ensure that you understand how to go beyond simple nuts and bolts movements by conveying personality and attitude into the action. You'll pretty much utilize every animation law and will emerge with the understanding of a true character animator. A two-part lecture series on the law of staging concludes the SAC exercise series. Here you will learn how to plan your action and develop characters and props. Ultimately, you will understand how to stage an animated sequence utilizing professional pre-production practice and techniques. After the SAC exercises, you will return to walk cycles but this time with character. In this three-part lecture series, you will apply all the aspects of character animation that you learned earlier in this archive. It will also show you how to extend and vary your walk cycles with a variation of steps and alternative loops. Next, the cycles continue in a series on quadruped locomotion consisting of 21 video lectures. You will focus on and learn each aspect of the action separately, just as you did so with bipeds in the basics archive. You'll begin with the rear legs and tail, then move on to the arms. Next, you'll learn how they work together and harmonize with each other, and how the head moves in relation to them, 
as well as the timing of each part. You will go through this process for a basic walk, trot, canter, single suspension gallop and then double suspension gallop. The specially designed stick quadruped has been designed specifically to guarantee that you understand the anatomical aspects that are common to most quadrupeds. This system eliminates guesswork and now you'll know exactly where to locate and how to articulate specific parts such as the knee and shoulder of a quadruped. Okay, so that gives you an idea of um, the kind of the work method. There are um, there's a basics archive, an intermediate archive, and an advanced archive for animation. We've got an anatomy archive. Um, I wanted to tell you, by the way, I'm going to start freelancing at the year at the moment, so trying to update my showreel as some of the animation on it is very old now. Old is gold if it's good, but uh, update it by all means uh, if you feel that you're a stronger artist. Remember, you want to put your best stuff forward. Um, so, um, yeah, and we also have the Animation Seminars Archive, which I'm going to be evolving into a pro archive. So this is it. Um, it's funny because I saw uh, a post on Reddit where somebody was complaining about the Real Animated Training Library saying it was too expensive and that in today's world of online things like Udemy and Schoolism, I ain't to be clumped alongside Udemy and Schoolism. Those guys, I'm going to say it here, I don't feel they, they have what I have. So, and their prices reflect that. On top of that, I don't know what planet this guy who's writing that is from. I mean, he's talking about his career. He's talking about something he says he loves. I'm giving you the world's best animation training in the world. Why do I say that? Because people who have spent 180k on CalArts degrees are joining this place. People who have worked on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for Nickelodeon are joining this place. People who have worked for Walt Disney Television and Walt Disney Feature Canada are joining this place. People who have come off Animation Mentor are joining this place. People who have learned from Richard Williams as the great, late, great Richard Williams who wrote the famous animator survival. His son, Alex Williams, is head of faculty at Pearson College London. People who are coming off that course are joining this course. People who have given the great Don Bluth, the last surviving animator from who, who met Walt Disney, who worked on Sleeping Beauty, who have given him 10 grand of their own money, are joining this course right and they are getting this course combined archive prices of every archive in here will not cost more than a gaming laptop with a few games and the monitor so what planet is that person from there this is the best value the best training the most affordable training anybody who is serious this place is called real animator training if you want to be real, pal, you got to get real. There ain't nothing like this. This is a gift. I will never lower the price. It has already been given. I'm giving this to humanity. I'm giving the real animator training library is the primary organ of the earth that serves and instructs mankind in the craft of hand-drawn animation. That's what it is. And I'm giving it away. For the price of a gaming hobby so anybody who says that they really want to do this and then whinges about the price i think it speaks more about what you really want to do with your life because i don't care who you are you're gonna have spent more than the price of a gaming laptop with some monitors or an ipad pro which you've updated twice right to the next model of the iPad on the next iPhone. So, would respectfully, 
anybody who has any complaints about the real animator training library price quite frankly isn't even isn't ready to be a real animator or simply it's not for you udemy is there schoolism is there good luck and maybe when 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 that hasn't worked out for you and you've really got your shit together i'll be waiting for you to join this place and to help you turn your life around so that I, i'm talking to that hypothetically to anybody who feels that way from that from that what i saw on that forum in reddit about the price of the real animator training library it is gold being given to people at the at the bare minimum for what you're getting there's nothing like this is a golden opportunity it's a gift it's like me giving you my very best that i spent 5 years of my life with 20 years of industry training at the very top animation direction animation supervision head of story character design layout storyboard you're getting all of that in you're getting all of my knowledge and this guy you're getting that for the price of a gaming laptop that to me is the most generous thing somebody can do for humanity when it comes to expressing the craft of hand drawn animation so just going to say that now if anybody else feels that way my free content's here for you i hope it helps you but if you want to take things further I think your attitude needs a bit of work because you know in order to get you got to give and I'm certainly doing a lot of giving here. Right, so that's the real animator training library. Uh for those of you who want to turn your lives around go and do that. If you want to support me like my friend, you can uh there's a link in the description. You can go to the AMB animation donation page. and you can click yes i'd like to donate um it's much better than patreon because patreon will take some of the money and all that if you really want to help me then you can just donate to me direct you can either enter your own amount or use one of the default amounts or if you like my products you can go to the merchandise store and you know uh there's some t-shirts mugs and stickers of Gracie Goodbear which is the uh, an AMB character or the AMB animation logo. So that's it. That's the sponsorship part of the stream done. I am not sponsored by TV Paint, Dune Boom, Adobe or anything. I sponsor myself completely self-made uh and I love that. And um so that's that part of the stream done. Let's get back on to drawing this turtle and then there's a question from somebody who sent me a message that I will tackle I look to tackle at the end of the stream right so let's now get this three quarter view done um so we have looked at the front and the side and now I can now confidently think about making the three quarter view so I'm good then also I'm going to consolidate um the head that I drew earlier right so everything is starting to um slowly come a lot faster to me with the character and this is just after a little like what is it 2 hours or so of playing right 2 hours of so of playing everything is starting to to make a little bit more sense now i'm going to come in here and say well he'll have his chest here he'll have his sternocleidomastoid here he'll have his trapezius up here so i'm putting in a little bit of human anatomy just to kind of help me out with that now i'm going to look at the shape of the front view of this thing right so obviously here we have a problem we want that to be higher right like that 
There we go. Already we're getting really nice, interesting shapes out of this. Um, out of this, right? Then we're gonna come down here like this along the side. I will worry about the shell pattern a little bit later. Now the shoulders, right, the elbow, like this. Now we've got the underside of the shell, which could cause me a bit of a problem. I want to think about his shoulder here. See, I'm putting him on a bit of a disc at the moment when he really shouldn't be on one. But that'll do. Let's turn that off for now. So his chest will be here. So it'll be like this. Not a hundred percent, but it'll do. The simple flipper shape. Let's just consolidate that. Got to stop with the anatomy. The anatomy was has helped me enough but we need to think about the basic shapes this should be more like this all right now let me finally rough out this i said there was a halfway point which is this and then the third point is this so you see while these things are not really known so much to my brain cell while I've got an idea of them you see I'm really just having man this this I have to say this these express key remotes on these Cintiqs right fucking shit the buttons are not always reliable. I'm like changing. So that's my that's my review. Right? I much preferred it when the Cintiq had buttons on it. Right? I've got this huge Cintiq. Yeah. Because animators have to flip their drawings constantly while they're drawing so you can see the flow moving. Right? So if one of those buttons is not working, right? And you need to have the move tool and things on your pen, so you can't sacrifice that button for a flip because I'm not always animating. I could be drawing and, you know, or coloring or something. So not very impressed with that right so anyway right so i've now roughed out the three quarter i'm going to go in and draw it now so let's just now i'm drawing this more like a a designer not like so much that it's going to animate as i've mentioned many times I'm more looking to create an appealing design, right? And this is just really the beginning because I've got to put him in poses. I've got to put him in nice poses that um, that'll 
have personality and character to him, right? So this is just me figuring things out, right? Like that. In this one here. So this will be here, the hexagonal shape. It's getting less. One, two, three, four. Slightly off perspective that. Bring that back. Again, we don't have to be a hundred percent on the perspective yet either. This isn't a finished model turn around. It's more a familiarization. Right. So let's bring that head in there. Look at these arms. Now the other thing to think about is the fin design. The patterned fin on the character, right? That's also something that has to be worked out. And I will work that out on the stream actually but not on this model i feel like i feel this drawing has been pretty much taken as far as i'm going to take it and then any more figuring out of him i'll have to do from drawing him in poses right what works what doesn't work right putting him in expressions Right. Those things will be coming when you see me start, you know, not on this stream, probably on another stream when I start to animate him. Where I'll kind of like be solving problems on the fly with the new design. Right. And then that's how you eventually, uh, eventually, eventually, eventually build a good character design, right? A one that actually starts having a identity. All right. Let's just have the shell like this. Use those little anatomical cues to give his head some meaning these drawings are enough what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to put them on my little sheet right so I'm going to take this okay so sea turtle right three quarter and front and side we've got that there so Let's put him like this. All right. Take this one. Let's put this one here like this. Let's get this one. Two hours thirty eight. There's going to be a bit more drawing. Let's put him here like this. It's good. Let's just shrink those down a little bit. Mm 
Move that there. All right. So we have got um, something of a sheet coming up here as well. Now, um, let's do the boring bit and save the expression still last, right? So I'm not going to be too precious about these drawings. They're done. Um, let's look at the sea turtle limb pattern. All right. Now. I'm going to go to anatomy here for this. Where we talk about like the bone being here and the elbow being here, the radius and the ulna, right? And then the hand being here, right? And then the overall fin having, when I look at the fin shape, the overall fin having the shape like this, right? Now, what I have to really think about is how to create a good pattern on him that's easy to animate. So, what I've noticed here is, is the finger section, when I pointed out all the muscles in here and then he has a thing, um, the finger section could be a cutoff point for me where I can start creating some kind of like, I might divide that into three, right? I might create hexagonal knuckles like that. And I'm just thinking, right? And I might put stuff in here like this, right? So... We've got ones down here like that. And then we've got ones in the middle like that, right? Now, that looks like a lot of work, but it's like doing hands, really. So as long as I understand that, like, okay, I might just have three at the bottom for the fingers, and I might separate that. And in this negative space, I might put little shapes in there right but then I have to think I might want to divide it again so again when I'm, I'm what I'm thinking now is, is that's just too much I want to simplify it further right so I'm going to divide the whole arm into three and I'm going to look at what I can do here right I might come on the outside here and on the outside I might just put a pattern like this right and come off like that right on the outside then on the inside i might put a pattern like that right then inside there i might put random shapes that don't necessarily need to um add up but it's but it's good right it'll do now I might put like almost almost like fingernails, like one, two, three, four fingernail pattern on here, right like that, and then just divide that up like that. And then I won't be drawing all the fingers, but I'm just thinking like, okay, I might offset with two like this, right? in there like that so this is giving me kind of like a and then i might he doesn't have stripes but i might put something like that there right so then whenever i animate him um let's just draw that in right and see what that looks like as a finished kind of When I animate him, um, these patterns will not always be consistent, right? That's one thing, like, if you look at anime, it's, it's never consistent with the hair design or anything. As long as the basic look feels like it, it's you, you think it's consistent, right? But 
as long as we've got like these things along here and these things on the outside and just offset things inside we're all right right so for me this could be a nice simple limb design right of his of his limbs right so I'm gonna do one of his foot as well they're gonna go on the sheet as well right so this is how my how my brain is thinking of solving complexity right with simplicity so when it's colored right it will feel like turtle pattern right but it's no way near as busy or complex right so now we're going to look at the um the foot bum, bum, bum. okay so we still it's good because i mean even if you guys don't have any questions or anything i've got a i've got a major question that i'm going to tackle at the end of the stream um so the foot fin is almost like a foot right so i'm gonna give him like three or four little toes like that right now i'm gonna think about um the the pattern right so let's give him toenails right like that and then i'm just gonna do the same thing right i'm just gonna i might just keep it like that that's easy and simple right maybe just throw in two that's easy and simple i'm gonna keep it like that this is this can be his um his kind of fin and then the more and more you draw the character the more and more these patterns will start to evolve and your tackling of them will evolve right so it's almost like okay well i've given him kind of fingernails or just some kind of border on the fins that give him that feeling right so let's um let's copy that let's put that there right let's make it a lot smaller let's put that there like that let's put that in there that looks good let's make that that color right so we've got fin designs we've got shell design um we haven't got the shell from the top but that's really easy to look at now we're going to um do some facial expressions so i'm gonna play around with some facial expressions so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to, I might do that on this sheet here, actually, so I just have it, right. So let's start with a, let's keep something simple. Let's start with a frown. Because he's, he's that kind of guy. So I'm going to. I'm going to put in what I think is the expression. All right. That's where we get the. There. 
There we go, looking good. That should be closer, the eye should be bigger. Here like this. Let's squish the nostrils a bit. Let's let's then play with that a little bit. Yeah, that's that that's looking good. Tidy that up. Nice shirt looking like a, a <laughs> Thank you. A snowman. I've been called many things in my life, but never a snowman. That's the first awesome. I really like that. Let's Let's make sense of the expression. So here I'm kind of like adding a lot more like squash and stretch and features like creases on the character to sell the expression because now I've got something of a model sort of worked out. I feel I can I can play a bit. I'm confident to play a bit with him. Alright. Like that. We'll keep his eye looking to the side. Real grump, right? Real sourpuss. That's how I intend him to be. Right. Let's get rid of the rough. Let's now put the pattern on him. Oh, he should have had some little kind of pattern on his eyebrows as well. But that could be making him a little bit too complicated. Now, what did I do here again? I remember we had like a square here and we created it like a pair of pants, right? With a vifront in the middle, right? And that's how we got the pattern on the side. Then we had another one underneath here like that. But I'm gonna put that to the bottom and one in the middle looking pretty good I'm liking that expression okay so we've got an angry expression going on here I'm going to do two expressions and one body pose alright How are we doing for time? 2.53, not bad. Just tightening up the shapes. Let's give him a bit of an eyelid, right? A little bit of a crease on those eyelids. Right, these little things add to the character the nostrils could be drawn better but I'm gonna leave them as is for now Just like that Oh, there we have our first expression 
that's a lot of fun actually turned out a lot nicer than I thought it would right so that's expression number one let's do another expression with turtles face it looks like someone works wakes him up and he is unhappy that's exactly what happens mr smithy the hula girl will be dancing away um so i'm glad that you've read that so i worked out this layout and his hair and what happens is is he wakes up and he sees but he gets treated to a nice rear end doing a hula twerk for him i guess so this is his end result <laughs> of his expression um grumpy old man is a grumpy old man right so um let's do a smile right let's work on that smile right so let's bring the head up like this all right so this will be I want to keep that straight if we can and bring this up here if we can yeah then we can play with the jaw in there perhaps all right this will come like this he's got the jowls here the eye will be in here right. he'll have his cheek lines here like this Yeah, something like that. That'll help with the direction of his, where he's looking, because his eye kind of floats on the side of his head. So it's a little bit. Let's keep that aged look about him. Let's fatten the brush. Don't want to. this is the angle should be more like this All right and then that's that's in line with his side so that comes up change the angle of his head I'm gonna keep uh, this is tricky this I've got to keep this thing here but uh, because that takes away his turtle element let's keep that straight that straight let's do it like that that's how we'll do it didn't want to open his mouth so much but that's the way we do it so really figuring out what I can do with his face what I can't do with his face right keeping the angles proportionate All 
Right. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Let's keep that. This eye like that. There we go. Have that turned up. Just bring that. Actually, I'm just going to bring that down there. That's what I want to do, but I'm going to focus on the jaw more. The jaw is going to come up here like this. There. That's how it's going to be. Now, turtles have teeth. Let me quickly see. Turtle teeth. Sea turtle teeth. Okay, so their teeth are just spikes. Wow. Serrated spikes. Like that. This thing could be like a little moustache almost. It's not a moustache, but the little wrinkles there could give him that feel like it is. And we need the squash and stretch of the pants, which will be like that. There. Yep. Do they have a tongue? Not really, but I'm going to give him one. Yeah. Looks good. Looks good. We got there. So. I'm going to do one more with his head facing the other way in a front view front view isn't his best but flipping just for the sake of flipping Dang it! I missed the show. That's how he'll talk. Why he has to sound like an old American grandpa? Probably because I used to love those shows with the old American grandpas. consistency there but doesn't matter we're working it out and these have become very much part of his identity these things okay so we got I'm going to do here I'm going to push that. Nice. Yeah. How big is that? That will fit nicely in there, methinks. Perfect. I love making these little sheets.
and we'll put this one here so I'm gonna take away this there we go let's have him in the red now what I'm going to do is one more expression of a front view how are we doing for time three hour more what a jolly fellow <laughs> yes that is um, only in the right when the right opportunity comes let's now have him looking square on making a ooh shape okay so there we've got a nice kind of ooh shape going on with his mouth Squash and stretch going on with the nose. His eyes are going to be right down here. And give him bigger pupils. Like that. Yeah, each time I draw, draw him, I feel he's getting more and more um, appealing. Right. So this will be the U shape. Let's give his jaw some structure. Let's open these eyes right up. He'll normally be always half lids, but we want to go extreme in this, try things out. So now we'll have the patterns just on the side. That's fun. That's a lot of fun. Right. Where shall we put that one? Put that there put that there and then I will move this actually I'll keep that one there so that will go down there like that move that make that a little bit smaller it's not the most exciting thing we'll take that a bit to the side there so now we have got our heads let's put them in stone jet black now 
He's looking <laughs> until I saw. Um, right. Still no questions, but that's good um, because I've got a question to tackle. Um, but I'm going to do one pose, very quick pose with the turtle. Um, let's do him as if he's looking up in excitement. Right. Let's have his head kind of turned to the side. So I'm drawing what I'm feeling here at the moment. Right. I'm going to keep his eyes a bit wider. Yeah, he's he's really enjoying the view, right? So Let's give him that. Right. It's going to be like this. Got the underside of his head here, like that. See, I'm getting a lot, lot more confident with the guy. Right. So now the shell. Is something like this right so we can play around with his hands right? we'll personify him even though he moves his elbows in a different way I'm gonna I'm gonna give him some human traits right gonna open the fin out like that gonna have him resting on that fin keep that all coming within the shape there like this so the sternoclide the deltoid Right. The shell will be here like this. Nice drawing. Nice drawing. This is what I enjoy. This is what I really like when I, you know, when you know that a drawing is coming together. Um, so we're going to have this. Out here like that and his feet are just gonna kind of come underneath there like that let's angle it a little bit this way all right so we've got the triangle here We've got these things coming down here like this, all remembered from the making the model. Now I'm going to make a fat, really fat brush. And I'm going to consolidate the shapes. So I can so I can start to
draw things in nicer when I I'm not going to clean it up but I'm going to give it a thin thinner line but I'm going to do something like that let me look at the underside of this guy here so just going to do something like that for now that's a problem that we can tackle at some other point oh yeah the fin design right let's try the fin design right let's give him some and little things in here like that good good let's have this come over this way great bring that down there we go and he had toenails didn't he um, we'll just throw in another one there looking good looking very good let me now give him a thinner line not a bad character design session it has to be said not bad at all let's okay let's just go around these shapes like that so I feel quite confident to just jump in and animate this guy now right if I had a team of people working with me I'd need to give them more information but for me as working on my own project I'm quite happy to move forward here we go so then again part of the appeal of you see the professionalism of the law of exaggeration as a, an appeal you see just how much anatomy even human anatomy has helped me get nice appealing creases for his neck area with the sternocleidomastoid um, put appealing fin poses and shapes right right into the character these fin patterns didn't turn out to be too bad at all and they're not particularly complicated he had the Vifront pattern and then 
I forgot to give him his jolts here so he needs to have his jowl here like this I'm gonna all clean we forgot to draw in his jowls and he has three on his jowls and we'll throw one in there like that here we go and the chest this one comes along here we'll put a little bit of dimension on the shell an extra line to animate but worth it because it'll look nice on the design that And almost done here with our little exploration sheet I'm just gonna put a little suggestive crease in there because I don't like the idea of his leg coming out of nothing even though it looks like that all right done What are those square borders that you draw in your that you draw in on your stream? I'm not sure I know what you're talking about square borders. Um Zedpo. I'd love to answer your question, but I I'm not sure as to what it is you're referring square borders oh you mean the the storyboard thing this thing here that's just the frame um, of this is a this program that I'm using is called store it's a very old version of Toon Boom Storyboard Pro I think this is Toon Boom Storyboard Pro 5 I think they're in their 20s now right I just have no real desire to um, upgrade I have no need right let's just do something like that now I'm gonna put in a little bit of shading on the fin sections just to test out the pattern on him it's looking good so far not bad not bad at all then he'll have a little bit of pattern up here as well there we go so that is our um, our pose of our turtle character admiring the beach good stuff all right so that is what we did um, what type of work should I have in my portfolio the world is very different now um, where technology is valued more than art so I've been so out of 
when I worked in the industry, it was all about drawing and drawing skill and showing that you had a command and understanding. I think the one thing that still stands. So that's the stream. We have designed a sea turtle based on this quick little scribble that I did before the stream and the storyboard idea and then all of this. Uh, then we basically really took these rough scribbles that probably took about 15 minutes and researched a real turtle and turned it into um, turned it into a a quick character design that I think now is ready to be done and used. Um, so I've got a couple of questions that I want to answer here. Again, if you want to, if you're enjoying the stream and you want to thank me, there's a link, donation link in the description, or you can like and subscribe and share this material so to help it get discovered. Um, right now, before I go, uh, it's probably going to be a four-hour stream because I've got a question that I want to answer. Um, from somebody who sent me a message and it's my answer is no different to what I usually say but we're gonna talk about it anyway um, very quickly what type of work should I have in my portfolio if you're an animator I believe even in the world of AI and even in the world of software your work should embody the 12 laws of animation I'm gonna go through with them now everything you do should show that you have a command of arcing timing slowing in slowing out fundamentally these are the three major laws that all other laws rest on they're the basic archive of my training library there's lots of people joining that but they ain't going to get nowhere if they ignore those lectures all the other laws sit on timing arcing slowing in and slowing out you then have pose to pose and straight ahead you have um, solid drawing or solid design they try to call it in CGI don't know where that comes from you know maybe keeping the silhouette solid or something you know because it can look strange if you're not working with the various windows um, then you will have follow through overlap and drag you will also have um, squash and stretch which is seven laws, but basically they're the six laws of movement. And then you go on to the six laws of life. You will need to exhibit anticipation. You will need to exhibit um, primary and secondary action. You will need to exhibit uh, exaggeration. You will need to exhibit appeal. You will need to exhibit staging. You will need to exhibit squash and stretch. So these things uh, you need to do to a high level to show that you have a commanding understanding as an animator um, I, I believe that still stands today although knowing the software knowing the most current software and all that is relevant if you because the industry is so technician based as opposed to art based now uh, so again if you are doing 2d back in my time drawing mattered because you had to have a command of life drawing and anatomy I've spoken to people who have joined my training library who've worked for, worked for Nickelodeon and Disney and they, they hire people now just based on the software doing the tricks and gimmicks and sliding. They don't want you to draw, he says. They discourage drawing. They want you to use the library body parts as long as you can do those tricks. But I guess if you want to be a good designer or anything like that, then you have to still retain the understanding of form, gesture, anatomy, negative space positive space composition uh, color if you're doing concept art color theory uh, light and tonal shade things like that the industry is an umbrella um, there's very little art left in it uh, but i would still say to anybody whose dream it is uh, always push for the the artist because you're going to stand out as those jobs are getting more and more scarce I mentioned we had Jeffrey Katzenberg saying that um, in three years, 90% of artists' jobs will be replaced by AI. 
Jeffrey Katzenberg is not a joke, though people like to belittle him, but they belittle him out of emotion. The man has, has uh, successfully ran the Walt Disney Company and then went on and created DreamWorks, uh, SKG, Spielberg, Katzenberg and Geffen. You know, he is industry. He understands industry more than any bystander looking on or any artist who worked in the industry for an organization run by suits like him. He knows what he's talking about. So in a world where AI is going to replace 90% of artists, if you want to be in that world, the industry world, then I would say the drawing and the strength of your ability as an artist is what is going to be required. Because a lot of these, a lot of people can digital paint, a lot of people can coming off these Udemy's and these schoolisms and all these things that are cheap, they learn these tricks, but their drawings do not have expression or character. They look like generic AI art. And it's not good enough anymore in this day and age to be just a bog of standard of the mill, bog, run of the mill digital painter who uses cut out, blur tools, gradient tools, learns a bit of lighting tricks and all that. If you don't have real artistic individual expression, you are fucked. That is my personal view on anybody who wants to still make it in the animation industry. If you're just going to be doing these cookie cutter things that were working so well because machines had not reach the level for, of the human machine. I, you know, the digital painter who just copies and pastes and uses blur tools to create atmospheric depth. You know, this is gone. It's not going to last. You got to really understand painting if you want to paint for the industry today. Now you got to have the uniqueness of an artist, which is why back in the day, even though I would say, why are Disney going to Gerald's scarf for their design and all that? They wanted something different. They wanted something unique to stop the film from being repetitive with that generic house style look, which is why Walt Disney would go to Eve and Earl to create the backgrounds for Sleeping Beauty. And then Mary Blair with her style, with other things. Artists are artists. They're very necessary, right? But as I said, you don't need to just focus on industry anymore. This is the best time to live if you're an artist because um, the line is being made clearer even more now, but you, have a, you don't need a middleman. You don't need somebody to give you a job. You can be a real artist. You can express yourself, reach an audience, and you can then communicate with that audience and earn money by serving your audience, your unique audience. This is a, still a unique time. It is the best time in the world to be an artist. It is not the best time in the world to be a coward looking for security, which is sadly what a lot of artists are, um, uh, or people who value themselves as artists. They don't really value themselves enough because they don't I, I personally, whatever happens, I will always have security in my art and security in myself. I, I believe in it 100%. I make the money. The money doesn't make me. I don't need somebody to approve of what I do to make a decision of what to do with my art. In a way, I'm answering the next question already. So I think that's a good a good transition on as I end this stream I'm gonna end it by answering a question which was I know this is an animation channel but AI and machines are replacing people in gen general no they're not they're replacing the mundane all right a human being AI has always been here the Xerox machine the IBM you know, I watched a film with my wife the other day about one of the first black females who worked at NASA. Now, I know they sugarcoat these films and make them all, they make up and improvise. But I was, I was actually quite happy to watch that film 
I got another donation from somebody. Thank you very much. Um, um, I was quite... That film was in the 60s and the 50s where IBM was invented and being brought into NASA and all that. And, and all those people who were calculating the mathematics were getting replaced. People think they're living in some new new situation. These are new world problems. They're not new world problems. This has been going on for ages. That's what I said. It's like... Are you just going to crumble and die out of fear from something that's always been happening, but your reticular activator system in your brain didn't relate because you didn't think it would apply to you? But it's the same thing, essentially. And the thing is, is industry was a good place for art at one time. And some art will replace in the industry, but art belongs to the artists and the consumers of art, right? And what are you? Are you a fragile ego looking for somebody to define you as an artist? Or are you a real artist? Are you a real animator? Which is what that R in the back stands, which is what my branding has always stood for. And I've never cared for the shit people have given me for calling what I do real, calling hand-drawn animation real and saying, so what we're doing is fake. Well, you wouldn't be living in a world now where it's called AI, right? If you're not drawing the follow-through overlap and drag, if a machine is working out the wind dynamics, if a machine is working out the light and shade and you're not animating the shadows, if it, what is it, right? I'm not belittling what you do. I'm just saying, call it, I'm just being real. I'm just defining what it is without sugarcoating it to nurse any fragile egos that that can't take the truth and want to bend it, right? I've said many times, I'm not drawing on paper, I'm using this. This is AI because it's lines of code mimicking an ink stroke. But I've, I've used the AI to the minimum. I'm not like, I don't know how to do that or it's quicker, you do it for me, please, right? I've used the AI. Yes, my bird, imagination is a treasure. Continue to discover, that's it. We have limitless. The only nation in this world that matters to me is the imagination. That's the, that's, you know, we've been conned. Reality is your imagination, right? Because where do all these things come from? You say it's real after somebody's imagined it and went up and taken some action to bring it before your five senses to define as real. Imagination is the only reality as far as I'm concerned. Everything else is the, is the effect, right? This world is a mirror a reflection of the imagination, your own wonderful human imagination. All right, now, um, I have got a letter here similar to this topic. Now, I really feel for this soul because he has defined himself as nowhere man. And the subject how do I come back? And he reads it like this. Let me put it here so I can read it. Hello, I am an artist who has sadly lost my drive and passion for creation. Mainly due to the outside and personal forces that have strapped me to my room. And ever since I'm asking, and ever since. I'm asking this because I wanted to know if there's some sort of program or college or sorts that teach these fundamentals. So the very opening of this letter, I don't need to read on. I don't need to read on, right? Now I'm going to give, I really care about this person, so I'm giving you a lot of my time here answering this letter, so please don't think that I'm, that I'm being mean or anything, but 
as I said, I used to be a martial arts instructor. And the way I answer things and the way I do things is, is I believe in really getting to the core of the problem with respect. And if that if that's a little bit harsh, then call it tough love, right? I don't give my opinions unless people ask me. You've spent a lot of time writing this letter to me. So I'm going to give you my time. And I'm going to tell you how I would tell the younger version. Because there was I was like this at one point in my life. I was a victim. I was what we call a to me person. Everything is happening to me. It's all external forces. I'm a victim of circumstance. Just read this. I'm an artist who has sadly lost my drive and passion for creation, mainly due to outside and personal forces that have strapped me to my room. So the outside has pushed you in. That should, that should be a good thing because it's from within that you're going to really find strength, right? But you're saying, I'm asking this because I want to know if there's some sort of program or college or sorts that teach these. So you're looking outside for help. You ain't ever going to get it from outside because the problem comes from within, my friend. And I'm going to elaborate on that. You say, is there any program or college? Is there any program or college? You're talking to the guy who has just created the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation. I could very easily turn this into a sales pitch where I tell you to join my, my uh, thing because it's the best. And like, what's the point of going to it? Like, I have people from Cal Arts, Animation Mentor. I've said it before, right? People from Disney, people. But the thing is, is my program can't help you. No program can help you until you turn a switch on inside yourself. And that basically switch should be, I don't give a fuck about anybody else's opinions. I don't give a fuck about what's happening out there. I need to work on myself. And everything I do is basically, I'm the master of my destiny and I'm the captain of my soul. And whatever I say it's going to be, that's what it's going to be. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Because you can get it. If I've done it, and so many other people have done it, you're no different. As you say here in this letter. I get worried since I haven't drawn in over a year. And I practically forgot many facets needed to create works of still and moving art. I'm asking as bits of a broken man. How do I draw again after such a long time? I don't want my passion to die in the dust. Since I know I'll have to live with the regrets of what could have been. I'm very impatient and often feel a bit dumb without wanting to try anymore since so many people out there don't even need to try when it, when it comes to just making something and that boils my blood in a vicious cycle. You're, you are a victim and you are a reactionary. You are somebody who will just react to any any little thing that that is that you feel relates to you. You're you're reacting to it, and you you've fallen into this vicious cycle, as you say. And that vicious cycle for me is is just being a victim. And I'm sorry to say, feeling a little bit sorry for yourself. All right, well, I'm not sorry to say it actually, because I'm I'm trying to help you, and and if that's what the problem is, then we have to accept that. That's the way I see it, right? Like, I was there too when hand-drawn animation wasn't happening and I didn't like CG and I looked like I could never get a job at Disney because Disney stopped doing hand-drawn when I came out of uni and then I couldn't find a girlfriend and this, that and the other and the whole world was against me and it's the color of my skin, it's this, it's that. It was always somebody else, it was never me. Right? I've been there many, many years ago. Right? And I have to say that it was all 
the way that I looked at the world. And you've done it here. Every time you use the word I, you're defining who you are, right? It's so easy. You just change who you are. You redefine yourself. Let's look at what the, what the origin of the word persona is, right? Person. Let's look. You, can, you consider yourself a person, right? Okay. Origin of the word person, right? Middle English... Um, Persona, character, mask, all right? Basically, Latin, Eurasian word for mask. You're wearing a mask. I think we all change our mask. When I go and talk to my wife and my daughter, I don't talk to them like this, right? This would happen if I talk to them like this. Right? No, I'm joking slightly, but the thing is, is we all wear different masks at different times there is no one you what you're doing is is you're holding on to all these things you're hating and you're making that your dominant mask your defining mask just throw it away you can be anything you want you can change who you are right now would you like to be this person let's read it out again I'm asking as a broken man, how do I, I don't want my passion to die. I know I'll have to live with the regrets. I'm very impatient. I feel a bit dumb. So many people out there, it just boils my blood. Who would want to be that person? I'm sure as hell know that in your rational thinking, you wouldn't want to be that person. So don't be that person. That's gone. Forgive yourself and move on. Forgive it. Okay, all those years that you were that person, okay, so long, see ya. I don't want to be you anymore. I want to be someone else. Start defining who you want to be now, a successful artist. Somebody who, who is passionate about the, your own self-growth and not so concerned about other people's self-growth and comparing yourself. Artists are creators, right? The human being, particularly in the world we live in, is so obsessed with competition but let's let's see what competition competition is yes and no yes and no yes and no a creative person simply is i'm gonna create right the minute you get into the competitive mindset you're setting yourself up to be a loser because you might have really done something really successful in your own personal goal of wanting to be a better artist and then you open the Instagram and you see somebody else who's either done something way better than you so you feel like crap and then you don't appreciate your own growth or you look at the Instagram and you see somebody who's way worse than you with five million followers and so many likes and shares and you feel like crap that's the competitive mind you need to throw that away and understand that you are just, you're a creator. You have the gift to create whatever you want to be. And the first thing you should create is the kind of person that you are. Because that's what you're going to get out of life. You're not going to get anything out of life. People want, I want to do this, I want to do that. But they want to stay as the same person. Well, that person is not capable of attaining the things you want. You need to change your personality in order to attain those things to become the higher person that you want to be. It's not going to happen by just continuing to wish and moan and think that you were right all along and every, somehow everybody else is the one with the problem or the way of the world is just, you know, you, you've just been dealt a bad pack of cards. You know, that's one way of looking at it. But it doesn't sound like it's doing you much good, right? And it certain, certainly didn't do me much good, right? So all I can do is just advise you to just change it, change your attitude. That's the first thing you have to change before you go. And that's one of the hardest things. It's like holding on to a, a crown of thorns. Your hand is bleeding. And you're telling, ah, oh, man, these flowers are so beautiful. I love them. I don't want to let them go. But they're giving you so much misery 
as you're walking around with holding this crown of thorns, right? Just throw it away. And then the wounds are still going to pain. But over time, it's going to heal. Over time, the pain will fade and you'll start to appreciate yourself as the new, the healed person. Because that's what this is. The drawing, the animation, how do I draw again? How do I this again? That's the easy part, right? It's the attitude that results in. I always tell people, you want to get to, to your goal in animation, I've got the best product. The real animated training library is the best, right? Imagine you're in a car, I've got the best car, I've got the map with the most direct route, and I've got the, the, the best bounty at the end of it. But I tell you what, there's one thing that car needs, or it ain't going to move, right? It needs fuel. And I can't give you fuel. I can give you everything else, but I can't give you fuel. And the fuel that your the fuel that your human vehicle needs is your attitude. Thoughts, feelings, and vibrations. That's what it is. What are thoughts? Thoughts are merely your brain, which is reading the, 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 the news feed of everything and anything in the whole world, right? That you close your eyes or you consciously, you're always talking to yourself. And somehow your news feed and your algorithm is always telling you about how, sh how shit your life is when it comes to your failed conquests and how, it, how it's unfair and everybody else's. And that's putting you in this vibration and you're going to try and draw with that? It's not going to happen, my friend. It really isn't. So you might think I'm giving you a lot of woo-woo, you know, feel-good, unpractical mentality coaching here. But I'm sorry to say that all is, all is mind. Everything is mental in this world, in this universe. When you sit down and say you're going to draw... You want to do it because you want to satisfy an aspect of the mind. So until the only way to tackle the mind is attitude. That's the only way. So if there's not the right attitude, then no matter what you do, is going to follow your attitude and the way you think about it. If you feel like shit, you draw like shit. Right? And you might think that if other people give you the celebration you need, or if you get a certain amount of money, that suddenly it'll all go away. But then again, you, 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 you don't realize we all breathe air. If the air was to turn off right now, we'd all be dead. Right, but none of us is always none of us is even really aware of the air that we're breathing. We're not even thankful for it. Because we're so damn used to it, we take it for granted. And there'll come a point where even if you're appreciated by others and you're making shitloads of money, if you think your life is a piece of shit, that ain't gonna help you. Nothing is. So um so I have to stress that any other advice I can give you rests on this one fundamental thing. You need to change your attitude. Otherwise, no program, no course, not even mine, is going to help you. Mine might because I always fuse mentality into my training. I can't help it. That's who I am. I love philosophy. I love, men I love mental health. I love... Um, self-improvement, I, lo I love self-development, personal development. I've spent at least eight years of my life engrossed in it. I've given up watching movies and films and just listen to audiobooks on repeat, memorize chapters. I love philosophy, I love self-help. So when I do, when, whenever I instruct people in animation or anything like that, I throw that in there because I know that the real change is going to happen if they wake up and love themselves and accept who they are and what they are and understand that who they are and what they are isn't what they was and who other people think they are right you can change that right now this moment this very instant you can change that 
I really do wish to just figure out what I need to do and just do it. Well, I, I, I believe I have given you my view of what you should do. Um, animation and art in general is something I know I enjoy, and yet every turn it feels as though my flame is inside is getting weaker and dimmer, which will one day vanish, leaving nothing in its trace. See, you're very dramatic, and I like that. It shows to me that you're a passionate artist. You're a thinker. You're a creative. I love your use of language. So it almost feels like you're enjoying telling me about this because this you're so consumed by this persona that you're, the beauty of the way that you're phrasing your words is there's some kind of, you know, it's almost like an appealing character that I want to read about. But it's unhealthy because, because you, you know, if you say that you love art and animation, then why should the flame ever die out and get weaker just because of what's going on out there, right? If you truly love it, if, if like, I don't know, if, I, if you had a kid or something and every, all, the other, all the other kids in the school didn't find that kid popular, it wasn't one of the popular kids, would you love your kid a lot less? No. Right? So... True love is true love. If you really love your work and love your animation, then you don't need other people to love it. You really don't. I know it feels nice, and I know as artists we want to share, and we, everybody, not just artists, wants to be acknowledged and wants to be accepted and wants to feel uh, the sense of validation. It's not just exclusive to us, right? So it all it's always going to feel nice when you get that, but it really, at the end of the day, it shouldn't matter. It really shouldn't matter. Um, if you love it and it enriches you, then that should be it. Whatever I'm doing, if everything I'm doing goes to pot and it all fails all of a sudden, I ain't ever going to stop drawing. The day I stop drawing is the day I leave this earth. For good. Right? I don't care. I might be successful making lots of money or whatever now and hope to God that's that's the way it's always going to be. But if it isn't, think I'm going to stop drawing? Never. That's what enriches my soul. And I'm pretty sure from the language you're using and the way you're communicating to me that it enriches your soul as well. Just need to remember that. Um, I don't want this to happen like it did for my older brother so many years ago he wanted to work at Warner Bros but he let go of his dreams as soon as he figured out hand drawn animation at the studio died so now he doesn't even make anything any um, anymore and to me I find myself a bit flabbergasted and sad seeing someone who once had passion just snuffed it out in an instant your brother had a goal to work for Warner Brothers, and only Warner Brothers, by the scenes, by the sounds of it. Or, this is what it is. When we're young, we look up to people, but those people we look up to are also fallible, like we are. And the older and older I get, as I'm approaching my 50s, I'm starting to realize that a lot of the things that people talk about, and a lot of the reasons they make as to why they stopped, is it's because of fear. There are six basic fears, right? I don't know if I can remember them all. One is the fear of old age. One is the fear of death. One is the fear of loss of love. One is the fear of rejection. And that's where I'm going to, right? The fear of rejection and the fear of failure is another one. The sixth one, sorry, Napoleon Hill, I've kind of forgotten that one. I'll have to go back and reread. I've read his work so many times. It'll come to me at some point. Fear of failure, fear of rejection. Okay? Fear of failure, fear of rejection. That's what it all boils down to when people stop doing something that they claim that they were passionate about. So, fear is, is a great, you know, mover. Or I would say, stopper. It stops people in their tracks. 
and sends them in another direction, right? So you've got to ask yourself, are you afraid? And there's nothing wrong with being afraid. We're all afraid. So when I say that and I ask you that, are you afraid? I'm not trying to belittle you. I'm not trying to whatever. I'm not trying to get to you. I'm trying to make you acknowledge the truth. Because one of the ways to beat fear, one of the ways to beat any of these things, is simply to accept it and to move on. And that's all you need to do. Pretty soon you'll, get, you'll, you'll be okay with failing. You'll be okay with being rejected. And you'll be okay with being afraid every now and then. Because you'll understand like everything else, it's a temporary state. You think you're ever permanently happy? You think you're permanently in a loving mood? You think you're permanently wise? You think what? No. Life, the, the human mind is constantly changing the body and putting it in various states beyond your control. Beyond your control. Beyond anyone's control. Nobody can control it. Why do you think people sit for hours trying to meditate and think of nothing? Uh, they're training the mind. You can't control it. Right? So just accept it. And if you're in a certain way and you're feeling a certain way, like the weather, man, it'll change. But don't let that thing change your attitude. Because your attitude is what ends up, your dominant attitude is what ends up becoming your dominant persona. And your dominant persona then consumes you. And you become basically a servant of the ego, the exterior self. The interior self is the builder of the ego. But then when once the ego, the exterior self becomes the dominant, the interior self merely just sits back there and just lets the ego run the show. Don't, don't allow that to happen to you. Change your ego. Bum, bum, bum. Then I start to constantly think of other things like what if I go to a prestigious school about art and they absolutely hate my work or just tell me to stop while I'm ahead. So? Why are you going to the prestigious school? Do you want them to kiss your ass? I'm being serious here. Do you want the prestigious school? You're going to a prestigious school why use the word prestigious? I'm, I'm telling you this out of love. Don't think I'm challenging you. I'm trying to help you the way I would help myself. And I'm the kind of person who would, who would teach myself like this. Especially I feel you're a guy. You say you're a man. Right? I'm an old school man. I treat myself like that. So I'm, to, I'm, I'm loving you the way I love myself. Alright? Why are you going to a prestigious school? What's the point of telling me it's a prestigious school? Are you going there so the prestigious school all gets down and kisses your ass and tells you you're so good and you're so afraid that they won't? You see where I'm getting at with this? Right? I tell this to my daughter all the time when she's uh, upset about not getting the top marks at her piano. I say, well, why are you going there? If you know it all, why are you going there? You're going there to learn. You're going there to be better. You're not going there to be everybody to put a crown on you. You're the very best. <laughs> See how ridiculous it is. Right? What kind of mentality? That, that's not the mentality of somebody that wants to succeed. That's the mentality of somebody who wants acknowledgement. And I understand that, my friend. We all, we all feel from our experiences unloved, unappreciated. Heaven knows sometimes with the work that I do and I look at the way things are on my YouTube channel and my Instagram and whatever, I used to get so, even a few years ago, like, wow, what's all this? I'm so thankful that I've been training my mind because that ain't ever going to go away. It changes and changes. 
I know one of my things had like 300k likes on LinkedIn. I'd never had that before. It didn't feel any different now. Because I've, because I've kind of gone on a higher plane mentally. I don't care. 400 views, 400,000 views. For a business, it might matter for business, but then at the end of the day, if I want to improve, then I've got to do something different if I want the views, right? So you've got to change your attitude of how you look at it, right? So you don't go to the prestigious school and have them turn you down and make fun of you. And, and even if they did, so what? Take it as an exercise of developing thick skin. Right? There you go. What if... Or that other people will argue my art isn't even art to begin with, but complete visual nonsense. Everybody has an opinion. There are people out there that think I'm, I'm shit at animation. There are people out there that I've read it. I've read it on forums and things when people talk about who to learn from or whatever. There are some people out there that think whatever. No matter what I've done, no matter what I'll do, It'll never be good enough for everyone. And I don't give a shit. It's what I think inside. It's what I know I've done. It's what I know who I've worked with. I trust my own judgment. I come from, a, a, you know, I've come from, I've been through certain experiences. I've met certain people. I've developed my character. I've done the necessary. I, do I need to improve? Yes. But I'm not going to fall apart just because one person or 10 people, or 10,000, or even 10 fucking million people were to tell me. There's a line in that uh, Disney movie, Mulan, which is taken from Lao Tzu. No matter how the wind howls, the mountain cannot bow to it. Develop some resilience. And, and start to love yourself. And not, not define yourself based on what others are you going to let other people build you up and break you down really come on because that's what that's what that's what most that's what a lot of us do when you think about it because we watch we're raised by these movies and things we let other people build us up and break us down my wife sent me this clip on instagram the other day it was amazing they ask these adults, what would you change about yourself? I'll change my ears because everybody makes fun of my ears. I'll change my nose because people call me Pinocchio. I'll change. Then they ask a bunch of little kids. I want to be a mermaid. I want fish, fish gills. I want a jaw so I can chomp, chomp, chomp. And I'm like, look at the imagination. These kids, they truly don't care. They're, they haven't been corrupted. You need to get back to your true self, my friend need to return to yourself and not allow these people to not allow people to define who you are because they can break you down in an instant you want to be that fragile have your true inner self inner strength So from what I'm saying is that I just want to draw again. I completely have no idea how to get back into it at all. Pick up a pencil and draw and be happy about it. Without letting other people's opinion of it. You know, I recommended somebody read a book. I've only read the book once. I don't even think the book's that great because it doesn't necessarily resonate with me. But... I like the message and I think depending on how old you are the book will the book will help. It's called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Right? Go read books like that. Turn off delete TikTok, delete Facebook, delete all these things for a month. Cleanse your mind with nothing but positive mental 
attitude statements because all you are, believe it or not, people like to really think there's so much more, but all you are is a collection of habit patterns. And you have a habitual way of thinking. Oh, you think that you're a, you're this person and you are this character that only believes in this. Brain, brainwashing is a thing and we've been brainwashed by film and subliminal messages and subconscious programming since day one. And that's why some of us are where we are and those of us who don't like where we are understood that we were brainwashed and we re-brainwashed ourselves. So my recommendation to you is to re-brainwash yourself. Do not give a fuck about anybody else and their views of your work. Love them. If they have a problem with you, they have a problem with, with somebody else and they don't love themselves either. So give them love in order for you to give yourself love and move on. Forgive them. Forgive them and move on. Let things go. I completely, okay, I get scared of the situation that all those ideas in my head will only stay in my head. Well, they are now, right? I can't even draw to save my own life. You can draw to save your own life. Pick up a pencil and draw. Don't even do it on the digital thing. I got tons of these. This ain't even the half of it. All of them have stuff in them. Right? Watch my other videos. I've done sketchpad run-throughs. All of them have stuff in them. I hardly post on Instagram anymore. I know as a business that I should post a bit more, but as I'm developing my own projects and really wanting to make what I want to make, I'm not so interested in sharing it out there until I think it's ready to be shared. You want to save your life. Understand that you have a life and it's very valuable. And you make the decisions. You really do. You think other people are making the decisions, but you're making the decisions. You either accept or reject. You say collectively everybody else says that that's the way it is. I don't give a shit. I, I, if, I don't, if I don't care about something, I don't care about something. If I don't see it that way, I don't see it that way. Do I have to engage with them and tell them I don't see it that way and make them see it from my point of view? Waste of my time. I'll rather use that energy making myself happy by drawing for myself. Right? I apologize for all the ranting and ramblings of me. No. This has been a very valuable question because... It helps me not only help you, but other people who I know that are watching this who feel the same way because we all will feel like this at some point. I have too. I wanted to say that I'm someone who's a bit down in the dumps and wants to dig myself out of it. Right? Well, grow some wings and fly. Do it now. It doesn't have to be hard. It's hard if you say it's hard. Resistance training. Resistance training. Right? To most of you and me, this is no weight at all. Right? But to some of you, it may be too heavy. You just got to get used to it. That doesn't make it hard. That just means you just got to get used to things. You got to get used to the new you. Say goodbye to the old you. Thank you. Thank you for all the years of misery, irritation, frustration, pain, and suffering. I've appreciated it. At many times, it's actually made me feel good because it's nursed my ego. But it's time to move on. Start by writing a list. 
10 things. 10 things of what you'd like to see, what the person you'd like to be. And then just start, start, start doing those 10 things every day. It's so easy. Days will turn into months. Months will turn into years. And then you'll become tired of that person and want to change that person at some point. Nothing is permanent in this world. Thank you so much for that message. Thank you so much for that letter. I really respect you. I'm very grateful that you felt that you could reach out to me. And hopefully my answer is taken in good faith. I'm going to repeat it once more. I speak to everybody, especially when it's serious like this, as if I was speaking to myself. I treat others as though I would treat myself. I love you the way I love me, myself. Because we're all part of the one consciousness as far as I'm concerned. And if you feel that you, I can help you in some way, then I'm going to help you the way I would help myself. And the way I help myself is never to nurse or never to mollycoddle. It's to just face things as the fact as as the facts as far as, as far as I can see them, accept them, and then make a move in that direction. So hopefully what I've said has been of some merit to you. If there's anything that I've said that has made you feel negative or bad or sad in any way, I wholeheartedly apologize. Everything I said was in, in love, trust, and faith, um, and uh, great respect to the fact that it takes a lot of courage for somebody who's feeling that way to let it all out to a stranger. So, utmost respect to you, my friend. All right, before I go, um, let's just quickly see. Um, art without soul will be destroyed by time when it is remembered as part of a larger disposed junkyard. AI will man Mage Burger and Michael Kilner Davis. It is 3.16 a.m. in the morning. 4.28 a.m. in the morning where you are. Um, imagination is the treasure. Good stuff. I feel I hear this letter in my head quite a few times every year for the past many years, and it's a mighty fight and humble listening. Go back to those videos I told you to watch, Mage Burger. Go back to those videos I told you to watch many years ago. I know that you're going through some strange phase in your life and you're meeting some people in your circle. We're from the same background, all right? I think you can tell by my name the kind of people that are around me. You asked me why I thought you'd be back. It's because I understand, all right? We're from the same background. Now, a lot of those people have a lot of toxic mentality and they got a lot of archaic way of thinking. Right. So um, just always return to the truth the, of, of, you know, essentially everything is the way you perceive reality in your mind. Getting a full night's sleep and exercise are a great ways to change your mind. Takes away excess energy and gives you focus. Sitting at a desk can be destructive yeah I mean uh, that's why you see all this workout equipment in my studio right um, Tim McHugh I want to thank you for telling us not only to create art that we want to make but also the best people we can be my pleasure Tim I mean, that's that, by, by being the best person you can be, you'll be then creating the best art you can be. It's always cause and effect, you know, so that's my absolute pleasure, sir. Valley Bug, drawing enriches our souls indeed to hell with my fears and doubts. I will create and draw for life, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, fantastic, uh, both character design and looking after your followers with the nice advice to that poor man yeah let's not call him a poor man now let's call him uh, 
let's call him the new man right um, I'm currently going through something sim similar currently fixing my relationship exactly Hervonia Baker look look I care about you Hervonia because you're always on my streams and I like you a lot but sometimes I just want to reach out to you and say say certain things but I know you haven't asked so I don't want to say those things um, but I just think just maybe listen to listen again to what I, I said today um, in my answer to that man look it really doesn't matter what people think and asking questions and things uh, for answers from people the only person you need to ask things Hervonia is yourself your true self not the persona not the person who you're identifying with the mask you're identifying with your true self all right your infinite potential that's what you are your brain can read the mind like the mind and the brain are not the same thing Take, think of it as the internet and the computer, right? Your brain is a reading and writing device. You can not only read, but you can write into the mind. The mind is the, what the internet is based on. It is, right? So you have infinite potential, more than the internet, and your brain can read it and find it from your own wonderful human imagination. You really just have it all with inside yourself it takes a lot of getting around and a lot of understanding to come to terms with that but once you do life tends to be a whole lot easier i have found it's always worth sticking around for these talks even if i don't get 100 with everything at least i'm giving myself the chance to hear something new out from the same messages i'm definitely going through many strange times with my recent decisions and mindsets absolutely I'm taking principles of animation class this upcoming spring on my college. Don't worry, I'm focusing on drawing on the Cintiq and motion tweening. I'll still ask for your feedbacks anytime. If I remember, you, you have access to the training library as well, Tim McHugh. So just remember that um, what's in there, it they may take time to do the exercises, but, um, but what's in there is the actual true, you know, aside from your mindset, is the true knowledge so when you take these principles of animation class it'll it may be good right it may be excellent but if you find that there's stuff that's a bit vague in there go in my basics archive and you'll find you'll find it give you a good re refresher of the um of the essentials on arcing timing slowing in slowing out all those kind of things right which is, and, and just remember that arcs are everything. Arcs are everything when it comes to animation. Right. Okay. Four hours, 22 minutes. I'm going to need to stop now. Um, I really enjoyed drawing this turtle. It's a nice thumbnail for the, for the uh, page as well. Thank you, everybody, for um, joining me on today's live stream. Um, Keep on working hard, always keep it real, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.